peace and power, Monaga, man. We are just popping off in real time. Can you dig it, man? I mean, look, Shabbat Shalom to the home team. It's your power when we do it together, you know what I'm saying? It's your power when we drive up, my noggin. You know what I'm saying? It's my trap tribe. <laughs> my man, Five Eyes Ma got us popping off, man. What are you doing? Yeah. That's my trap trap. Over here banging on me. That's my trap trap. Can't get around me, yeah, I got three six That's my trap trap. Yeah. Keep blowing, throwing heat. That's my trap trap. Thought I was African ham. Oh, no. Nah. Then I found my chicken, my boy jeans. Oh, my yeah. Trap. But I give her walk on my prayer. Most yeah. High. Trap trap. I'ma keep flowing, throwing heat. That's my trap trap. Dodging hijack, travel mafia lead. That's my trap trap. Cooling folks singing like me. That's my trap trap. Over here banging on me. That's my trap trap. My shot hop in the ether feed. That's my trap trap. I'ma keep flowing, throwing heat. That's my trap trap. Yeah. Trap, trap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Trap, trap. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we did it again, my naga. My naga, we did it again, my naga. We did it again. We did it again, my naga. My trap, trap. Hey, shout out to Five Eyes, man. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> hey, this right here, man, is official. You know what I'm saying? Tribe up music. I mean, music just for the tribe. You know what I'm saying? My jig is the first. They really say, man, we're going to do this just for the tribe man you know what i'm saying our music our intention everything most high over everything and this is all inspired man all praise to why you know what i mean do the bro five eyes mom man you know my jigger you know what i'm saying we we seen the process man from my jigger to my the five eyes mom and it's all a high man it, it's it's you know truly baruch my dog you know the bro you know really framed and shaped right before our eyes man and popped off this tribal mafia, tribal music, my naga. And this is what the tribe is surfing, man. We surfing that Five Eyes My Wave, you know what I'm saying? So we appreciate the bro, and we appreciate you for all that Ahab you showing, my naga, man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all seem like you know what you talking about, and it look like you know what you want, you know what I'm saying? Who that singing like me? That's my tribe tribe. <laughs> Shout out to Fly, baby, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Brandon Reed said, drop, we need a video on the flag for the peeps that don't understand what you're showing, brother. Great song and drop on the wave. You know what, my noggin, man? This drops for you. And anybody else that needs some clarity of, you know, why, uh, you know, why this is important, you know what I'm saying, to revisit with a dragonfly perspective. We ain't here talking about the flag. We really here talking about the symbol. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, you can see it in two dimensions or three dimensions, my nog. You know what I mean? You might just see it and pick it up in the, you know, uh, whatever Civil War, you know what I mean? Union Army, Confederate Army, Confederate flag. You might pick this, you know, symbol up 
from the 1800s. Same thing with the Christian symbol, the Christian cross. You might just pick that up, you know, and think that they just invented two cross sticks, my noggin. We're talking about the covenant. And they are also talking about the covenant, but they are specifically hijacking your spot, right? They're rolling up in your spot, which means they're rolling up on your mark, which means they're rolling up on your sign, your oath, your con, right? American, they took the con, con, monogamy, monogamy. When these jabronis took the con, right? American, when they took the con from the copper color nagas, the copper nagas found here, ain't nobody else fit this description, monogamy. Now everybody want to be copper. <laughs> you know what Grandma Penny looked like, monogamy? What did Benjamin Franklin say? America is holy, swarthy, tawny, managi. Copper color races, not brought here. This is the reverse, reverse, reverse for my trap tribe. Managi, you were just found here, man, by the swarthy Europeans. Can you dig it? They knew you was here. This is your own family rolling up on you. They knew where they was going. They knew how to navigate to this spot. Hey, it's a more and more war, man. You want to come over here and get cozy with us, man? You got to get cozy in the drop, man. You got to get cozy in that mem sauce. Love to yourself the real. You got to get cozy in that water. In that water, man, you know, if you come if you come with chaos, you're going to get chaos. You come in order, you get order. But don't come over here trying to, you know, put us in some black hole or try to put us back into that tornado mind. We popping off with five eyes, my managa, because that's my tribe tribe, man. <laughs> Let's go, man. That's my tribe tribe. That's my tribe tribe. That's my tribe tribe. This is my tribe tribe. Yeah. Hey, hop to all my cold keeping noggers. We got 500 cold keeping noggers. Yeah, man. We make that five dollar work. You know why? Because we got a thousand cold keeping noggers. When a thousand cold keeping noggers are unified, then five dollars is all it takes from a nugget to get to that five, five thousand five racks. My noggin. Forty dollars, man. Come on, with a thousand cold keeping noggers, forty thousand. We ready to. Buy land, tribe up, do all the stuff we got to do real time with photo dollars. Hey, hi, man. What? We popping off, man. Look at all this a hey, hi, man. Look at the team effort, man. You want to ask about Drop Nation? You want to ask what we do? You know what I'm saying? We're learning how to code up and keep the code in real time, which makes us unified. You know what I'm saying? And, hey, when the family's dropping it like this, some folks might have a hundred when, 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 when the whole tribe needs it. When we need it, you might have 10. You know what I'm saying? You might have 20. But either way, we put it together. We make it work, my noggin. For the trap tribe. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. We got to keep this going, man. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. America is on earth. But right now, we're driving up in real life, man. Hey, this is battle, man. They call this the battle flag, right? Hmm. You gotta ask, who are the chicken mob? And I'm only asking because my bro mob is asking. In this song, he's saying straight up, I found my chicken mob. <laughs> That's my trap That's my trap trap. That's my trap trap. That's my trap trap. Oh. 
truck. I ain't tryna outshine nobody. That's my truck. I just wanna share my energy. That's my life. Over here banging on me. That's my truck. Over here help me carry me. That's my truck. I'ma keep flowing, throwing heat. That's my truck. Dodging hijack, travel mafia lean. That's my truck. Pulling folks singing like me. That's my truck. Over here banging on me. That's my truck. Much I hop in the ether free. That's my truck. I'ma keep flowing. Man, shout out to Steven Torres, man. Jerkery Strickland, man. Again, man. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it going. Deshaun Percy, Sean Delaney, Marco Walker, Anonymous, man. All my Anonymous family. Come on, Lee. Sister Abiya, Jamal, Victor, Robert Slater, man. You know, Anonymous, Rodney, Rodney Cole, Robin Wood, Robin Rhymes, man. Candace Stosick. All the anonymous family, cause you won, Andre. Look, man, we did it again. We are well over a thousand, over our five thousand dollar goal, man. Let's double up for the tribe in Texas. I'm proud to uh, say this, you know. I'm proud to to come to y'all with great news, man. Uh, the my naga Yosef got his flowing water, man. He got his mem sauce, man. He he got that hot water. The pipes are fixed. All praise to Wa, you know, for you, my naga. All praise for while for the tribe, tribe, my night. <laughs> In real time, I mean, when we come together and make this music, this is more than a notion. This is about unity, my night. Coming together in real time, doing what we got to do, my night. You know what I'm saying? This is what we got to do. You know, we can be proactive. We can do this for food, for shelter. Again, land, land development, all these type of causes, all these things, because we got over 500 code keeping nuggets to do it with we can we can make moves my nugget <laughs> yeah this is my tribe tribe man what it do steven torres m-h-o-e what it do exodus 20 got us in code keep us in code let's go man hey miles popping off man. that's my tribe tribe one tribe one vibe m-h-o-e yeah. I'm gonna keep blowing down with you. That's my trap. Thought I was African ham all my life. Like, and I found a chicken mug with jeans. Oh, I think my naga ma said I found my chicken mug with jeans. So when you see this, you gotta ask who are the chicken mug, right? Why is it on this? so-called battle flag we're gonna to get to the flag but again this ain't about the flag it's about what the symbol was used for and you can't start in the 19th century when it comes to the hebrew towel because the towel is the sign is the mark is the covenant and my naga you hit the mark look what we done my naga look what we've done together man my co-keepers my cold keepers m-h-o-e <laughs> i love that y'all popping off the m-h-o-e man and you know we gotta you know again get an a hop to my jigger he had a i mean five eyes my <laughs> he had a, a beautiful song called m-h-o-e he's been a look man sparking off this tribe of music i just dropped that eat the walking man i just got, man my jigger said he was eat the walking in the sky sky so it popped off eat the walking this is how we've been flowing, man. I be y'all say we come together to do what we need, what what needs to be done when it comes to the tribe. My commitment to my aquayama Akis is real by any means necessary. Much a high tribe, we got you. I be y'all got the drop, man. I be y'all got the drop. So my noggin, we hit our mark, right? We hit them cross sticks. We did it again. Shabbat shalom. I'm proud of y'all. I'm proud of I'm proud of everybody. I'm proud of what we stand for. I'm proud that we can do this for one family at a time, two families, five families at a time, while building up our resources in real time and keeping the water flowing, you know what I'm saying, for the tribe, man. And you know what I'm saying? So now we can keep that going for the next family out there in Total Texas, affected by everything as well. You know what I'm saying? We know we got Aqua D. So love to Yosef 
the real, he'll be running that point game, man. You know what I'm saying? Making sure that we are in contact with other families, you know what I'm saying? And being able to assist as we can. So keep it going. I, I'm so proud of y'all. I didn't have to tell y'all to keep it going. Y'all already knew that we have so much to do out here. So y'all are keeping it going. You know what I mean? So when you keep it going, it's going directly to my bro, Yosef, who's able to run point to get it to, you know, distribute what, whatever, whatever the need is, my nigga, whatever the need arises to be, you know what I'm saying? Specifically with my toe, Texas, Nagas, you know what I'm saying? And we got a strong connection with our toe, Texas, Nagas, man. And we're proud to be here for my Nagas. And we know we got a lot of work to do. But for now, my Nagas, we hit the mark. We hit the go for my truck. truck. Hey, hey, hey. Shout out to Five of Us, but I can't get enough of it, man. And again, man, great comments, great support. Just look out for it, man. I mean, this is really that next level up, man, in that tribe of music, you know what I'm saying? Doing it for the tribe, by the tribe. You know, shout out to all the great producers that you know, is allowing us to use their beats for free, you know what I mean, just to pop off, and we appreciate y'all, man. Hey, shout out to my sister, Mac Mac. She says, the tile, the tile, or the tile, to remind us of Ezekiel 37, 16 through 28, the two sticks promise to reunite the tribes with their King David and Hawa's presence forever. White linen, gold thread, blue, purple, red. Hey, shout out to Mac Mac Halal. Oh, wow. So my sister's saying that before, you know, you can look at cross sticks, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to get on this battle of chicken mama. You know what I'm saying? They're saying that 34,624 people died. In it. Now, how many of them was Nagas, huh? Yeah, man. We're going to get to it, man. I mean, when we talk Tao, we talk two cross sticks coming together, we're talking this inter this uh, interception right here, you know what I'm saying? Or this, yeah, you know, interception, you know what I mean? Intersection, <laughs> not such, intersection. Um, and when things come together, you got a vortex, right? You got a point, you got a very important point, right? There are many ley lines or dragon lines all across the earth. So there's many lines that are intersecting. When you zoom in on one, you got one towel, right? You zoom out, you got many towels, right? So this towel has always been a point of reference for us, right? So when I look at that flag, the first thing I see is the towel. I don't, you know, I'm not paying attention to the evil that was put on it, just like the swastika, right? The swastika was, was originally, you know, some beautiful positive sign. Then you got the Nazis messing it up, right? with a negative vibration, the same thing you have with these hijacks, but you can't, you know what I'm saying, ever lose focus, my nigga. They want to turn you against the towel. They want you to see just stars and bars, right? But even these stars, love to the family of Lamar, even these stars, these 13 Confederate tribes, 13 stars were 13 Confederate tribes and protectors of the Mississippi Valleys and waterways. So I know my family's charged up when they see something that has been, you know, just inception in their mind as torment, torment, torture. You know, they put Jesus on the cross showing the torture, right? So every time we see a cross, we think torture. Managa, the cross sticks, all the cross sticks is the covenant. They put torment when you broke your covenant, it became torment. You see what I'm saying? This was a sign of your torment. Same thing as uh, seeing a dragon or a comet. They say it's an omen of something good or an omen of something bad. It's good or bad signs. Yeah, that, that dragon can put your ass to sleep, but that dragon can wake you up, right? You can get that Tarde Ma or you can get that Five Eyes Ma, right? You decide based on how you keep the code. And we know Exodus 20 got us in code. Now, a few of y'all been asking about some good clarification, you know what I'm saying, on this flag, man. My, my bro, Rel Durrell said, please make a video explaining the flag. For those that don't know, the song is Five Power. Rel Durrell got the drop. 
And I love this right here. Love to my sister Nanny. <laughs> Oops, uh, let me get, let me get back. Rhyme time. Pop it <laughs> on. That's my tribe tribe, man. Love to my sister Nanny, man. She asked for clarification as well on this flag. And I love the response, man, by the brother Brandon Reed. So that was our people flag before it got hijacked. If you go to Georgia, the people don't get offended by this flag. Look at Lil John and the East Side Boy album cover. She said, I knew it. He said, drop it showing us that, that that's our flag, but it was hijacked by the, by the ops, by the opposites. Everything is in reverse. And when you don't know who you are, they don't know what's really going on. You don't know what's really going on when you don't know who you are. The whole thing is to give you a falsehood of your history while the enemy sits back and change the narrative of the story. And in this case, they changed the whole narrative of the towel, of the cross sticks. They changed the whole narrative, right? So you see some stars on it. You think it's their stars. <laughs> you see a cross. You think it's their cross. You think this is some Christianity situation or some new thing, you know what I mean? Two cross sticks is one of the most ancient indigenous signs on earth, man, just like the spiral. So all they did was put a new intention on, on your magic, right? They, 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 they put their own wicked intentions on your crystals, right? How can you move forward and you don't know the truth of the past? The question is, do we as a people know what's going on? So where are you going when you don't know who you are? Shout out to Brandon Reed, breaking it down, 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 down. Hey, man, so you want clarity, man? <laughs> well, then you got to, you know, ask about the chicken mago, right? What, what did Ma say about the chicken mago again? He found his chick of Magua jeans, right? M-H-O-E, man. M-H-O-E. The question is, who are the chick of Magua? And you have to get it in your head bone when you see it on that flag, right? When it's talking about Chickamauga. Chickamauga. And you're gonna continuously see it on the same flag, different variations, still got this Chickamauga. You gotta say, why is that so important? Managa, it's so important because this group of people called the Chickamauga, AKA the militant Cherokee, they called them. The militant Cherokee, right? The fierce and violent Cherokee that didn't want to get down with our peace treaties, that didn't want to give away millions of land at a time, that didn't want any encroachment by the hijack, that wanted to shut this shit down and say, get the fuck up out of here. The actual fierce, violent military militant Cherokee that they're calling Chickamauga after a creek of Chickamauga known as the river of death because so many Nagas died around there defending the land. Ma said I found my Chickamauga jeans. He's saying that I'm representing the militant people, right? Cherokee means we the people, they say. We the people. I'm representing the militant people. They stole we the people. They stole Managa, the, the towel, all the towels. They, they took all the towels. Managa, they stole the Khan, right? Because Khan means priest. And when they took the priesthood of the copper Nagas found here, then they also took your towel, right? They took your covenant, Managa. When they took your con, they took your covenant. Con, con. Chicken Mago War, right? 
Chickamauga, 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 and on and on and on. Before you get anywhere else, they had to get through the Chickamauga. They had to get through the fierce of violent Nagas. This was the first line of protection. We got that water. Alahua. Shabbat Shalom. You hit that mark, my Nagas? So chicken mob with 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 chicken mob, right? And then it says quasi and no major war, man. Tell that to the chicken mob. Northwest Indian War, chicken mob. Quasi war, chicken mob. Barbary War, Managa. What is the Hebrew word of the day? Barber, right? Barbary War is the barber, is the swan. Managa, what is a swan got to do with the chicken model? Managa, what's the swan got to do with the Almec or the ogre? Huh? Who they call ogres and Shrek? are just making fun of the swans, my naga, the swan knights, my naga. <laughs> I mean, what does the barber, Hebrew word of the day, barber, have to do with the swan, my naga, and the knights, my naga? Are you seeing clearly? Hebrew word of the day, barber. We go from chip, we go from the Chickamauga for the first 20 years, continuing with the Chickamauga into the Barbary. <laughs> the Barbary is just a continuation of the Swan, what? Swan, what? Swan Knights, my name. The Barber Hakatsi. Connected back to who? S Solomon. You think this is a play play Solomon or the real Solomon in America in 775 AD when Machir Nehemiah, you know, supposedly has some type of a battle, you know, with, you know, another uh, Israelite. Huh? So you have one Israelite from the Davidic family going to war with another Israelite from the Davidic family, right? We're still trying to solve the riddle. But just know that this is for the American Empire. Anaga, this is 775. Swans, right? Swan, knights, 775. What has this got to do with the roofs? Clan Ross, wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. What's it got to do with Clan Andrews, man? And Lee Andrews and the lost tribes of Andros. Oh, well, there's a lot of connection with the Andros and Andrews Island and California and all the Andros Islands, the Bahamas, Managa, hey, the Hyksos, Pharaohs, uh-oh, the shepherd king pharaohs on down into Princess Scotia, where they're getting Scott from. So when they say Scott-ish, they're really referring to a connection with Scotia, Monaga, not the Ishes, but Scotia, or the Scythian, Scythian, Scottish, Scothia, Monaga, <laughs> Saracen. Papa Bull, 1452, put him in perpetual servitude, these who? Saracens, right? So the war on you started well before 1776.
Yeah, man. We're talking Saracens, right? Oh, boy. Let's get this. Oh, yeah. Pope Nicholas V issued the papal bull during that verses 18 June 1452, which authorized Alfonso V of Portugal to reduce any Saracen. Now, in quotation, in parentheses, they put Muslim. And I go, <laughs> how could that be? If this is a Saracen's head connected with the lost tribes of Israel. So Saracen appears to be another generic term or misused term. The Saracens, Sons, my naga, you know what I'm saying? The Scots, Scotia, my naga. And uh, this is Israel, my naga. These are the lost tribes of Israel identity. So these Saracens, they had to put in parentheses Muslims, love to let us find the truth who wrote this down to, you know, uh, people of a promise. So these people of it's diagonal one they're gonna call the Saint Andrew's cross, but it ain't got as much to do with a a Christian martyr, St. Andrew, it has everything to do with the tribe of Andrews or the clan Ross or the wow. house of Rus. Clan Seol Andreas, which is what? House of Andreas, who they say from the race of St. Andrew, but we know we're just talking the clan roofs, the kindred of the kings of Jerusalem. Wow. Oh, wow. And these roofs later on founded all this Russia stuff, which is why you got these swarthy, you know what I'm saying, uh, connections with Asia over there and Asia over here. We're talking swan knights and we're talking the French or the Franks. The Franks, the original French, are all swarthy, like Benjamin Franklin said in the Observations of Mankind, 1751. And what? Swan Knights, what happened? The Rus and the Franks were part and parcel in forming the Knights Templars, man. Temp Now, Tecumseh joined the battle in the late 80s, like in the 1780s. So all of these Chickamauga Wars, you have Tecumseh fighting and all this stuff. So by the time you're getting through all of this, you have Tecumseh War in 1811, 1812, 1813. But he was already fighting these wars, so he was groomed to be hijacked free with who they called his mentor, Dragon Canoe. We're going to get some of that. Dracon Canoe. In my noggin. This was Israel's last stand, man. So they want to talk flags. I'm talking shields. I'm talking coat of arms. I'm talking wisdom. I ain't talking flags. I ain't here to, I'm not here to defend no Confederate flag. I'm here to defend the Hebrew town. And to let you know that this is all you that they're mimicking and trying to put a negative intention on it. And we're gonna get some of the reason why, you know, so-called African-Americans are charged up. And obviously we know it connects to the terror and the torture and all that. We know, but you know, I'm still gonna let my sister pop off cause she's gonna just, you know saying, go in on it. You know, we're gonna use the dragonfly perspective to put it back in order, you know what I mean? And, and just get all the dropout. But again, we're just talking Israel which is why we're talking Swan Knights, 
and why we're talking Solomon, the builder, who has a fleet of trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon or the swan boats, the barbers, right? The ships are shaped like a swan with its sails like the wings of a beautiful gliding white swan, barber. Manabi, Barbary. Tecum Se, right? You have the Sa. Uh, love to my sister who, you know, broke down the etymology, which came out to be the lamb, L-A-M-B, lamb. So you have lamb, kum is to rise in Hebrew, the lamb that rises, the ta is the tau. <laughs> Right, so you have the lamb that rises to hit the mark, the lamb that rises to hit the mark, the covenant, the takum sa. When you talk chicken mother, and I'm I'm grateful for my family that says please break it down, the flag because it just gives me a reason, us a reason to talk chicken mother. Any reason to talk chicken mother is a great reason to me, man, to pop off, because it's most high over everything. Now, the chicken mother Cherokee referred to the group that separated, separated, right? From the greater body. So you had more Cherokee that were against the chicken mother for separating. These greater body Cherokee, a lot of them ended up doing the deals, signing the pieces and friendships, you know what I'm saying? And these Cherokee were already, a lot of them, against Tecumseh, against Dragon Canoe, because they were already war between these Cherokee and the Choctaw, the Choctaw versus the Creek. A lot of times the Creek would side up with the Shawnee and Tecumseh and all them, right? So this is what we're getting out of. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the records, right? So the Chickamauga, who they're calling Chickamauga, refers to a group that separated from the greater body of the Cherokee during the American Revolutionary War. The majority of the Cherokee people who majority wish to make peace with the Americans or the hijacks near the end of 1776. And again, look at this 1776, take off that one and you're right back to 775 or 776. <laughs> and that's a thousand years. Now we know they added a thousand years, right? <laughs> so, you know, how does all this squeeze in, man? You know what I'm saying? We could be talking all the same story popping on but if anything, if this is a real timeline, you can at least see clearly that this has been going on for at least a thousand years when it comes to the American empire. By the time they're trying to hijack it a thousand years later, there was already an Israelite on Israelite war. In the days of Solomon, according to the script, after Solomon's death, the kingdom is divided, Khan. Even with David, it was a dividing in the house of David so it's not strange to see an Israelite on Israelite battle taking place, Northern tribe, Southern tribe, anything like that, because we know it's all happening. Especially when it comes to these ships of Solomon and swan boats, man, or the knights. So this Chickamauga can easily be a she. And when you're talking she, Monaga, you got to talk she. Who are the sheep? This is a colossal all meg head, man. And in situ at Tres Zapotes, Mexico. He don't look like them, right? He look like you. <laughs> and look at these brothers right here, right? They pulling you out the ground, man, out the ground bone. Oh, but that looks like me. No, 
you know, you know a Negro face when you see one, right? But they want to claim this as them. They want to say, no, we, we got people that look like that. Big lips, big nose. But where'd they get it from? <laughs> Come on, man. You can't find this in America not connected with the knighthoods, with the swans, my man, with Solomon, with David, with the she. It says the Almec, love to real history, WW, man, real talk. The Almec called themselves the she. Now we got Shikamagua or Chikamagua. We know that ch no CH sounds like chi in any other language but English, right? Ah. because everybody else wanted to make treaties of pieces and friendship, right? Near the end of 1776. Wow. Treaties of pieces and friendships, man. And we're going to come back to this because it's going to play as we see the development of Tecumseh trying to gather the tribe the same way Dragon Canoe did. You know, he's raised up under him. Dragon Canoe had, you know, some success uniting the tribe, you know what I'm saying, from different different tribes, you know, indigenous tribes against the hijack. Tecumseh attempted the same thing, you know what I'm saying, and had, had some success as well, man. But at the end of the day, he wasn't supported, man. At the end of the day, the tribes refused to tribe up because they wanted to sign treaties of peace and friendship. Look at the date, 1786. Seventeen eighty-six. Let's go to it. Seventeen eighty six, you were right in the middle of the Chickamauga Wars. Let me get my alkaline, man. It's about to be good, man. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, shout out to Five Eyes Ma for shouting out the Chickamauga. This this got us searching. And I'm glad you're asking about that flag because it gave us a reason to talk the towel, my noggin, to take it on home and take our symbol back our mark, our covenant back, our con, our priesthood back. Con? Seventeen seventy six, we were right in the thick of things. And while we we're over in the thick of things, just to let you know that they had help. Just for the body bag that these hijacks had help in the midst of the Chickamauga War, those that did what were separating from the greater body of these Nagas because the greater body of these Nagas wished to make peace with the hijacks near the end of 1776. What kind of peace? What kind of friendship? Treaty sealed by the Emperor of Morocco, June 23rd, 1786, and delivered to the American agent at Morocco. American agent is not uh, our people. It's the hijack, my nigga. This is a treaty between Morocco and the hijack. They'll tell you themselves that this is Morocco, right? So, okay. The more would say this is Morocco and they're making deals with the American agent. 
if this is Morocco and this is truly your land, you ain't going to be making no deals for it. You know what you're going to do? You're going to fight to the death so that no hijack encroaches on your land. And when we're in the midst of fighting to the death, because we have this land by covenant, we have this land by inheritance. They say, cool, let's get them out of here. Here's a chance to get those those tribes and knock us out of here. Let's team up with the invader. Let's make a treaty with the invader. The Chickamauga said, nah, man, we don't want to make no peace. The followers of Ski Gusta or Red Chief, Dragon Canoe, moved with him in the winter of 1776, 1777, down the Tennessee River, away from the historic Overhill Cherokee towns relocated in a more isolated area. They established 11 new towns in order to gain distance from colonists encroachments. The frontier Americans associated Dragon Canoe and his band with the new town of Chickamauga Creek and began to refer to them as the Chickamaugas. So these frontier Americans, these hijacks started calling this tribe Chickamauga because they were near this creek. Five years later, the Chickamauga moved further west and southwest into present day Alabama. Oh yeah, <laughs> you see it. Alabama got the towel too, right? Established five largest settlements. They were then more commonly known as Lower Cherokee. This term was closely associated with the people of these five lower towns. So they're on the move, right? They're trying to get away. They're trying to get some type of, uh, you know what I'm saying, stability. They're establishing their cities. You know, they're reestablishing their towns, my naga. And while they're in the midst of doing this, dead smack in the middle of us going through hell, these mofos are signing pieces and treaties. The emperor of Morocco is making a deal with the devil. And you want to come at us and more us and Islam us today as if Preston John was down with that shit, as if King David was down with that shit. The Sultan was paying Preston John tribute. Don't try to put us into a black hole. We claim our tribe. There ain't no tribe called more. More is a general term for greatness. You want to be great, man? You want to you wanna wear this flag, man? You want to wear this, this covenant? You want to wear this promised land on you? You want your lot? The children of Lot want our lot too? Or we don't exist to you no more? Psalms 83, Confederacy. So the name of Israel is no more in remembrance, my noggin. Now we're more, huh? Saracens, huh? People of a promise. This is in 1452, right? Right before Colombo is supposed to be doing his thing and all this invasions happening. So we've been at war. But we at war against our own people first. The people that are covenanting our lot, which is why we keep the code, because Exodus 20 got us in code, and according to our code, thou shalt not covet his neighbor's things, right? But you're covenanting our land, you're making treaties for it, to help the invader whenever they need you. We weighing all in singular the premises with due meditation and noting that since we had formerly by other letters of ours granted among other things, free and apple faculty to the aforesaid King Alfonso to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens. A Saracen's head, right? The word Saracen was used in early centuries of the Roman Empire describing an Arab tribe from the Sinai Desert. Stop it. We're talking about lost tribes of Israel identity. Right? We're talking and roost. Wow. Which means we're talking who? 
the kindred of the kings of Jerusalem. No, we're not talking no Arabs. No, we're not talking no Muslims. No, we're not talking Islam. No, we're not talking Morocco. We're talking Israel, my not. The tribes of Jacob, my not. The seed of David, my not. This ain't no play play. You know who the royals are. You know who the real regals are. The ones that got put to sleep in that Ruach Tardy Ma and we got popped off again by Hawaii. You know what it is. You can't moor us up to forever <laughs> in the black hole. You're going to have to give us, you know what I'm saying, uh, a little respect. Put put some more respect on our name and let the tribe of Andrews rock. Let the tribes of David rock, of Ephraim rock, because it's two sticks, huh? Ezekiel 37, love to my sister, Mac, Mac. And the word of Hawa came to me saying, Thou son of man, take you one stick, ride upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick, ride upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them to thee, one stick, to another stick, cross sticks, that they may become one, my naga, in your hand. Don't you get it, man? This sign is about unity. This sign is about coming together. When they used it in their battle flag, they're talking about themselves being united and themselves coming together against you with their treaties of pieces and friendship. Nah, man, that's not what Hawaii's talking about. Join them for you one to another into one stick that they may become one in your hand and when the children of your people shall speak unto you saying will thou not tell us what thou means by this say unto them thus says Hawah behold I will take the stick of Joseph which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel his companions and I will put them unto him together with the stick of Judah, make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand, and the sticks wherein thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. And I'm going to gather them on every side, bring them into their own land, man. Yeah, it's about the land. It's about the land rights, which is why you're just popping up out the ground on them, right? These are land rights, my Nagi. Yeah, this treaty over here is for the land rights, my Nagi. Uh, remember that Zillia S. Bay drop for the longitude and latitude right here in the promised land? Rainbow Coalition, whatever they are, Zodiac Rainbow thing. Their own land. Don't, don't moor us up today as if we don't have our own land. Don't, don't try to graft yourself into this tree because of our Ruach Tarde Ma. I will make them one nation in the land. We're not talking about all the Moors, my not. A further Ruach Tardy Ma, another generality, another black hole. We're coming together with one stick. <laughs> and they're going to be one in Hawa's hand. We're going to be one in the hand of our creator. You want to make treaties, man? So every 50 years, they got to, you know, redo this thing. So it was redone and uh 1836 <laughs> all right i mean look i'm gonna leave it for you to dig on just know we're gonna come we're gonna come right back to this because <laughs> you know it's heartbreaking every time i come back here to this thing man that's that's why i don't even like doing you know what i mean it's like it's it's so messed up when you really put it with the timeline 
that in the midst of our situation, in the midst of our fighting to unite our tribes against the oppressor, right dead smack middle of it, we got these niggas over here, man. This is from the empire, the emperor of the Mornis, right? <laughs> so we declare that both parties have agreed that this treaty consisting of 25 articles shall be inserted in this book and delivered to the Honorable Thomas Barclay. Honorable, the agent of the United States, now at our court in Morocco, right? You see how this language looks just like the court language today, right? The Admiralty Law today, kind of. You see why they got protection with their more shield, shielding them? It comes right back to these treaties of pieces and friendship, which is why they don't want this system gone. It's their system, man. Honorable agent of the United States. This is the deal, right? Deal with the devil. If either party shall be at war with any nation, the other party shall not take a commission from the enemy nor fight under their color. So you, you can't help the enemy. So when, the, <laughs> so when the agent of the United States, right? When the United States went to war against us, Chickamauga, Chickamauga, when the United States hijacked corporations, with the war against the chicken mom that separated because they didn't want to make peace with the so-called hijack Americans. Based on this treaty, they couldn't help us. They couldn't help us because they made a treaty of peace with the enemy. If either party's at war with the other nation, yeah, you, you can't fight under their flag. You, you can't fight under their colors no more. They couldn't try but with us no more. They made a deal with the devil. If any party shall be at war with the other nation, whether whatever, and take a prize or a slave, right, belonging to that nation, and there shall be found on board subjects or subjects <laughs> or effects belonging to the either parties, the subject shall be shall set at liberty the shut the subjects or the slaves right so if <laughs> if they come over here and hijack us and we have some slaves right some uh you know slaves that are a part of this treaty then they would automatically set them at liberty and return everything back to those Moabite nations or whatever nations that are part of this treaty. By the time Tecumseh tried to rally, uh, push Tamaha, push Mataha, the uh, you know chief of the Choctaw, and the, and that chief of the Choctaw told him that no, nah, you know, we ain't gonna fight the white man. You know what I'm saying? Because you know we have a peaceful situation with them. We have harmony with them. We're, we're harmonious with the white man. This is what they were talking about. This is their harmony. They got extra stuff. They helped them take us down. And then they rocked our towel on their flag and put our name, <laughs> the name that they were calling us, they put it right there on the flag just to let you know a little breadcrumb. Why? And in the midst of this Chickamauga War that really set off everything, including the demise of Tecumseh, because now Tecumseh could not rally all the tribes that Dragon Canoe did because they had signed a treaty of peace with the enemy. Now they could pass by, pass free. They got to pass. They could be unmolested without any attempt being made to take or detain them 
They can go free. They got a more shield. A signal or pass shall be given to all the vessels belonging to both parties by which they are to be known when they meet at sea. <laughs> and if the commander of the ship of war, either party shall have other ships under his convoy, the declaration of the commander shall alone be sufficient to exempt, exempt any of them from examination. They don't even get checked. They don't get examined. They can roam free in the sea, right? They're mooring in the sea, in the, in the, in the water. They're good. The pirates are good. Man, if any of the parties shall be at war and shall meet a vessel at sea belonging to the other, it is agreed that if an examination is to be made, it shall be done by sending a boat with two or three men only. And if any gun shall be fired or injured during or injury done without reason, the offending party shall make good all damages. If any more more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effects to his majesty, the citizens shall immediately be set at liberty. What citizens? The white man, right? The European or, you know what I'm saying, the swarthy Europeans and the effects restored. This is a, a treaty with the devil between the Moor and the hijack citizens of the United States. They're under their protection. They got the Moorish shield, right? I mean, you can go in and read this sickening shit, man, you know? But uh, we see clearly before you come over here trying to Islam us or more us, man, just know that we see clearly. So, you know, cut the wing, man. The same for you. We do it for our tribe around here. We pop off tribe up music, my naga, for our tribe right around this piece, man. Can you dig it, man? I thought I was African him all my life. Like, then I found my chicken, my good dreams in my tribe, tribe. But I give her walk all my prayer, most high, high. I still like either walking so high in the sky, sky. You don't know all that I'm a be, I'm a trap, trap. Come on, pick a man, leave us my trap, trap. Ain't trying to. Managa, in case of a war between the parties, the prisoners are not to be made slaves. They don't know nothing about slavery, man. They didn't go through the the picture they paint is that all these niggas was going through slavery. And when you talk about the Confederacy and all that, they said, oh, the slaves are the slaves, the slaves, freedom of the slaves. That's not black people, man. That's a that's a specific attack on a specific breed of Nagas called Negroes today in the ghettos today. They have no idea who they are, but this Papu Bull, they didn't go through this, man. They weren't invaded, searched out, captured, vanquished, subdued, <laughs> whatever pagans, right? You got the pagan calling us a pagan. The devil's calling us a pagan, right? And other enemies of Christ, right? Now we're rocking with their Isus, but we were enemies of their Isus. We were fierce and violent towards them and their power. Managa, you're the fierce and violent ones, man. The Khan's found here, which makes you the dragons found here, the fierce or violent people. They call you dragons, male or female, man or woman is a dragon they call us dragons so who's dragon canoe who's the leader of the chicken mafia? his name is dragon my naga <laughs> we're, we're being led by dragon my naga we're gonna get some more on you know what i'm saying the powerful one dragon canoe you know what i'm saying Leading up to the powerful one, the Kum said, Can you dig? This is what <laughs> these wouldn't be considered Moors, Managi. They weren't rocking on that squad. They called themselves what they are by tribe. Don't try to black hole us today. 
Now you want everything to be you, right? Anything so-called black got to be there. Cut it, man. That's wing wham and we have woken up out the spell of the Ruach Tarde Ma. Hebrew word of the day. Uh, are the Moors also the Swan Knights? I don't know, because it, it appears that the Swan Knights are directly connected with Sylvanus Oga or David, and Sylvanus Bravo, directly connected with Solomon, my knight. Right. It appears that the American Empire Kalelus ain't Morocco. It's Kalelus. Connected with Amarik, Makir Amarik, or Amarika. You can't represent our swan. You can't represent our Salima. You can't represent our Exilarchs. You can't represent our Nazis. You can't represent our rulers of Sumer. And you damn sure can't represent these giant ogre heads and all mix, Managi, because we're just talking about Solomon the Builder, the tribes of Israel, the lost tribes of Israel, identity. Which brings us back to the Tao. Let's go. So they're going to call it a salt tire, salt tire. Salt Tide, also known as St. Andrew's Cross or Crux de Cusata, heroic, heraldic symbol. We're not talking flag over here, we're talking the symbol. Huh? This ain't about the Confederate flag, it's about the symbol they're using the X cross, right? In the form of a diagonal cross, like the shape of an X in Roman type. And we say, well, who are the Romans? <laughs> wow. wow. Huh? Manag. Who are the Reman? Also known as the Reman. 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 Here we all day. Hey, do, 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 do. Who's the Rema? Because the Rema is where they're getting the term Rema, which became Roma. This Rema is even for pomegranate and grenade or grenade or granada, right? Pomegranata. Blowing up, right? Fiery, right? Bang. Pomegranate. Rema. Seven species of Israel, <clears throat> given that the word is used in the Bible to describe one of the seven species of Israel. So Remon is directly correlated with Israel. And one of the first fruits the 12, 12 spies brought back from their surveillance, their recon mission, Remon, Roman, Remon has been in use long before the advent of modern warfare. So these Romans have nothing to do with the Rimon. We're just showing you that they are stealing everything, but through Rimonim can be found, though it can be found in ancient Jewish text, Hebrew is hardly the only language to make the association between red, crown, crown. So you got crown, you got pomegranate, you got grenade. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Red crown top fruit that has re has reputed healing properties. Wow. So you got abundance, fertility, healing. You got red man, red man. You got pomegranate. 
right? You got promised land, right? Joshua and Caleb and the spies went out. They brought it back to prove that they were in the promise. Hey, don't let them steal your money, money. You are a money. You are Ramon. You had that healing, that healing do, the healing property. You are the fertility, the new life, man. Come on, man. Or you can, you know, drop that bomb on them, right? <laughs> it could be death or life. Life or death, right? Life or death. Well, that's very familiar, man. You know, tap, tap, right? The five bucks, my. That's very familiar with this tap, tap. We're talking life or death. The covenant, you keep it, life. The covenant, you break it, death. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 40 or 68, right? Death. Mama, that mem, could be life or death, right? You got your hawa. Anybody still confused about the vibration? Hawa, hawa, the secure breath. You can call the creator what you want to call the creator. But in Hebrew, we refer to our creator as our breath of security, as the secure breath. And you can't hijack that. You can't hijack secure breath and picto paleo before you get your zan zan, your food, my naga. And when you get that water, mama man, she can be chaos, right? <laughs> or appear to be chaos, mighty. You know what I'm saying? The water is the blood, strong blood, mighty blood, Managa, the noble, the regal blood. You know, so you got order or chaos, man. You got to pop that seed off, though, right? Come on. Who's the chicken mug? Treaties of pieces and friendships, man. I mean, hey. So now we understand that Roma is the pomegranate in Naga, the healing property, Managi. The promised land flow. For today, for today, we're taking it back. Alawa. So when they say Roman type, they're really co-wording it back to the Hebrew, Tau. The word comes from the middle French, Sartre. All right, all right. <laughs> now check it. In the 16th century, right, it was put on numerous flags. Scotland, right? We already know what they're calling Scots. We connect to Scotia. Already has it on there chest bone right on their coat of arm so you know we dodged the hijack because they're just going to throw us in the loop scotland burgundy russian navy well who are the roos <laughs> why would it have anything to do with the russian navy it must have something to do with the house of roos right clan ross in there huh Clan Ciel Andres, Clan Ross, Clan Ross, Rusha, House of Rus. So clearly, this is why it's being used with the Russian Navy or Ireland. Remember, Benjamin Franklin said all these are swarthy, tawny nuggets. Now let's check out, you know, a few more of these flags. Oh, and its early use was not intended as a representation of a Christian cross. Well, we know that because we have the Hebrew, a left bet with the towel. Oh, not the Christian cross, not the St. George cross, the towel. So you, you put the towel on the side, it's still the towel. X marks the spot, it's still X marks the spot. And Picto and Paleo has nothing to do with nothing else 
but the Hebrew, my naga, the Hebrew sign, the Hebrew mark, my naga, the Hebrew covenant. <laughs> Shout out to my Jimmy. Five eyes, my <laughs> let's go. The Hebrew covenant, my naga. Let's go. So you see Scotland, Creek, or you know, uh, Cross of Burgundy, Gascony, all the maritime flags, St. Andrew's flags, Russian joints, you know what I'm saying? Let's go. Chemical hazard, okay. Hey, X marks the spot. Might be a hazard, you know what I mean? Here are all these coat of arms now. Which one did they leave off? Look at this San Andres Archipelago, right? San Andrews, right? Land of Andrew. Come on, man. Crossing you up. That's it's weird that they didn't put the same the actual Andrews cross here, right? Then they went to the flag. So why did they leave out the main perspective? Because they didn't want to really you know, <laughs> bring it all the way home. I mean, when you dig on, just put in Andrews. Look, I'm not putting in black. I'm not putting in Negro. I'm just putting in Andrews Crest. Let's go. You see, no studio tricks. I just put Andrews Crest. All right. Wow. Wow. Any questions? Any questions? So that's right there in your face, Bone. All day, all day, all day. You see Scotland right here with the Naga on top, right? Because the Naga is the night, right? <laughs> what do you think this night thing is about? This night thing is all about the swan nights, my Naga. Hebrew word of the day. Barbary war, right? Right, right. Got it. Why why the night, right? Who's the night? The Franks and the Rus formed the Knights Templar, right? The Knights. The Knights. These knights, swans, right? But they left off the Andrews coat of arms. <laughs> but they'll call it the Andrews cross, right? Got it, got it. All these other flags, Jamaican flags. Shout out to my Yamaka family, man. Hamaka. Hey, man. You see it. So... All this is going on, then they get to the Confederate stuff. So when you see it today, you get charged up with torture and pain. And we feel you, my Naga. Oh, we feel you. <laughs> but I really feel our covenant even more. And we know it's a more and more war. But everybody, you know, is coming from the same spot because they all want to get the land, right? X marks the spot. Florida, Mississippi. Remember that uh, St. George, uh, cross the St. George situation as well? Let's go. So what I want to do right quick, I want to, you know, take it to, you know what I'm saying, the charged up vibration, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let the sister pop off right here, <laughs> you know, cause she's gonna, you know, talk about how the flag means hate, you know, and all this hatred attached to it. And we know what we digging on, you know, I just want to hear you or, you know, allow you to hear her. Cause what she's saying is pretty much a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Nagas will say, you know what I'm saying? Hatred, hatred, hatred. Again, we're not representing the flag, but we're talking about what's on it, right? And what's on it shouldn't be hatred to you. 
you know what I'm saying, how it was used during this time period, just like the swastika, that's hatred, my nigga. That's hatred. East Side Boys, right? <laughs> Got that little John and the East Side Boy drop. Okay, okay. Get it right here. Wow. All right, so let's get it from here. You know, I want to, you know, dig on this sister. She's a black history teacher. All right. And, you know, again, we're digging on our investigation. Let's get some of these uh, breadcrumbs out. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to the Aqua. Let's go. That is a lie. And I'm about to tell you why it's. Back it up. I'm going to just jump right in. I'm going to just jump right into this. You can come and view it later if you want to, all of that. But let me just give you all a history lesson, okay? I'm seeing a whole lot of this. The Confederate flag is not hatred. It's history or it's heritage or it's whatever you believe. That is a lie. And I'm about to tell you why it's a lie, okay? The Confederate states had three flags, three flags, okay? They had one flag at first that did not have the bars and stars, as they call it. Okay, the hateful banner, because that's what it is. Okay, it's hateful. I don't care what you say to anybody of color. It says, hey, I ride with the Klan. That's what it says to us. So the Confederate, the Confederate States had three flags. They adapted the bars and stars was the second one. And then they moved it to the bars and stars in the corner. Hey, Chrissy, you already know this because I hey, thought girl, what it do? the bars and stars in the corner, like the Mississippi state flag or the Georgia state flag. Yeah. OK, well, this is the deal. The Confederate states wanted to separate from the union because they were adding other states that were not slave states. And then when they found gold in California, those plantation owners were like, hey, we can go to California and take our slaves and they can mine all the gold. And then we can continue to make money hand over fist. That is the real reason that the South seceded. Because they wanted New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, all those states south of the Mason-Dixon line to be slave states, agricultural states. Yes, the North didn't really need slaves because they had textile industry. And they started to industrialize before the South. Now, another thing that y'all don't know, that the majority of the slaves were brought over here not to harvest cotton, but to harvest sugar cane. Sugar cane will kill you if you've never seen it. Just right quick, she popping off, but you see where the paradigm is, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, the flag reminds her of the KKK, you know what I'm saying, the Klan. She don't see the town, you know, she just sees how this symbol was used, and that's why we're making a differentiation, you know? And she also says that we were brought over here Instead of saying that, nah, my naga, you found here. You're going to say that's a big point because she's going to talk about her skin color and that everybody brown, brown or lighter must be mixed with some white people. You know what I'm saying? And that's an enormous myth because they found you over here looking the way you do. You the copper color cons here. This is the shade we come in, my naga. This is the original Amara Khan float. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh, you get, you get from this to that. We come in all these... Look at a copper penny, my nigga. You're going to see all these shades in it. That's us. That's Israel, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> she, she, I'm just going to let her pop off. We're going to talk about it. But, hey, she's she doing a great job. You know what I'm saying? It's all a high. You know what I mean? But we want to get out that paradigm. We want to, you know, get off those limitations of saying, oh, when they brought us here. Because then that takes away our ownership of what we are, what we have, and what they've been making treaties of pieces and friendships for right <laughs> you know what i mean there's a reason that they're they're tribing up with the enemy on a particular people a particular people that looks just like her red ruddy copper color cons let go you know what i'm saying so we know we got you know more 
you know, deeper melanated cons. We got a little less melanated, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? But this is the tries, monogamy. And we know, of course, we got mixtures happening left and right, left and right. We, are, you know, obviously, you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying you're the copper color cons they found you. <laughs> All right. They, they knew the difference between what they left and what they found, as all we say. Let's go. So the majority of the first slaves went to the Caribbean, went to South America. There are way more slaves that ended up in South America and the Caribbean than ended up in the United States. They found the people there and they put them in captivity on their own land. Managa, you the dragon. <laughs> you are the American. The copper color race is found here. Found here by the Europeans. They found you found my nugget. They didn't bring the people that they ended up switching in different places would, would be like, I'm going to take you from uh, Virginia and drop you off in South America or one of them islands in between. I'm going to take you from the Bahamas and drop your ass off in Texas. Like, they were sweat. Trump, man, they didn't have time to be crossing the Atlantic all them times. They were just switching up because they didn't want these slaves, right? It's hard to make a slave out of somebody on their own land because they know the land better than you. Harriet Tuckman, right? Armanetta Ross, right? She's a Ross, right? Armanetta Ross is the real name of Harriet Tuckman. We're talking about Clan Ross, huh? Clan Ross. Why did Harriet Tubman know the underground passages, my nigga? All right, all right. Let's get a few more minutes. We got a lot of popping. We got a lot of pop pop off that's going on right now. I'm just enjoying the flow. Shabbat Shalom. It's all happening, man. I'm excited, man. It feels good. Why you ask? I'm getting to that. Let's go. Cotton was not a profitable crop until Eli Whitney's adventation of the cotton gin. You cannot separate cotton by hand. It's not profitable. But when he made the cotton gin, it was a, it was an easier way to more efficiently remove the seeds from the cotton. Okay? So then it became a profitable crop. That's when they started bringing in more and more slaves to the United States. So they could not only harvest cotton, but indigo and tobacco. Okay? Those three crops. Cotton, indigo, tobacco. All right? So another way, when y'all are saying it's protecting your southern way of living, what you don't know, and, they, and you haven't been over, is the three-fifths compromise that they decided they were going to pass a piece of legislation that said a black person was only three-fifths of a white person. This is out there. It's the three-fifths compromise because the South said they weren't getting equal representation in the legislative body of our government. So that's why they came up with the three-fifths compromise, okay? Blacks and slaves in the North weren't treated as, bad, as badly as they were in the South, but it was still slavery either way, Okay. So the North is kind of like, we don't really need slaves. We have servants. A lot of the indentured servants that came over here, their families went to the North, okay? Because of the industrialized economy they had up there and there were other jobs they can get. Yes, I understand all whites in the South did not own slaves, but they wanted to protect the institution that made black people subservient to them. So I've seen kids say slavery for 400 years was a choice. Oh, it was a choice? Y'all don't know what happens when a slave rebellion was shut down. Y'all know about butt breaking? Or do you want to touch on the other thing that I'm not mixed directly? But y'all aren't ready for that conversation. My lighter skin bears the scars of slavery. That's where we got an issue. We we appreciate the drop, but my nigga. You got to go back to the definitions. Tawny for a reason. Swarthy for a reason. Wow. They knew that there were differences. That we're not the same tribes as the tribes in Africa, man, unless they came from here. We can respect our melanated family across the plain, but we all, in order to respect each other, we're going to have to let each other have our identity back. You're not respecting me if I can't pop off with me. Because that brings me back to my towel, my covenant, because I was just found here, copper colored, wow. Managa. If you put a sea of so-called black people in a room, 
the average complexion is going to be copper colored, my naga. You're going to have some lighter, a little so-called darker, more rich in this and rich in that. Overall, you're going to balance into a red, ruddy, copper colored tone, so-called brown skin people. These people are on the are on the coat of arms, my, my naga. She the same complexion as this naga right here with the curly hair, right? How many nagas does this fit the description for? Antoine, Tone Tone, <laughs> Eda, Wink Wink, all the homies look similar or related to this naga right here. Huh? He could walk in any family picnic, family BBQ, family reunion, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you got, this Naga could be there and that could be your relative and you know it. This roost represents not just a few people with the last name Andrews. It represents a wall of protection a wall of protection they had throughout Asia over there and Asia over here. There's a connection between the Asians, the India superiors. Preston John is the emperor of the three Indians. He ain't no more unless you're talking great. He ain't no Mongol unless you're talking great ones, right? It all goes back to great, like the grand, like the grand Khan. But Khan Khan, you need to know that when they found the Khan Khan, they found the Khan copper colored, my naga. That were found here, man. Not brought here, my sister. I mean, she popping off, man, much love to you. You know what I'm saying? She breaking down, you know, really a, a psychotic, a psychology, you know what I'm saying? This is something that's like, still something that is part of the trauma and her reaction is part of the trauma you see the trauma kkk it's all trauma trauma and even this is still based on the trauma but managa they didn't mix all us out like they've been saying you know what i'm saying in order for that to happen you got to have hella so-called white men when we know the europeans are swarthy right so how how does this work right <laughs> How does this work, man? You know, this is just, just riddle me this right quick, my naga, and then we're gonna keep it pushing for the dismount. A beautiful di the best dismount of all time, man. Look at these swarthy nog Charles, right? Charles, holy Roman Emperor, swarthy, right? How the fuck how does this work where now you got white holy roman emper emperors and a white roman and i say roman you think white people and their theory is that so many white people mixed out all the black people to be light-skinned when it was the swarthy naga that came here the emperor of rome is swarthy the romans are swarthy the romans the real ro the real romans <laughs> you know what i'm saying the, the real pomegranate out of Nagas, you know what I'm saying? The real Ramans, the real pomegranate, my Naga. Can you dig it? The real pomegranate is swarthy. And then they took the title of the Ramon. You got fake pomegranate. Man, you got the what? Where's he at, man? Where's he at, man? They hiding him. They hiding him from me, man. Where's he at, man? Oh, no, no, that's the fake one. Where's he at, man? Uh-huh, we got the Knights. Okay, okay. They love to real history, man. Got all the drop. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, here we go. Swarthy Charles, right? <laughs> this panel shows the last seven Inca emperors and the subsequent first European emperor of the Inca. First European. Look at him, man. Managa. 
Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. This is what the cities of gold. This is who's trying to, you know, throw Estebanico our way. This is who's running things. How the fuck did we get mixed out by white people? Are oh, you saying no nigga seed was, you know, connecting with a naga, uh, you know, female egg? <laughs> the nigga seed wasn't going to the nigga egg. Is that what you're saying? Why? Because you was, you know, stealing our women and popped off so many mulatto or so-called mulatto mixed race. Come on, man. You intercepted all the seeds from one naga to another naga in that short period of time to create a mixed race of half white motherfuckers? No, man, because the Europeans are what? Holy Roman Emperor Charles? It's a more and more war. We're talking treaties of peace and friendship, right? But no, this ain't no play play, man. This is the first European emperor of the Inca Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, Charles Kento, as the 15th Inca Emperor, he hijacked the heritage of these Inca people. And all these Spaniards, look how they try to color them in and lighten them up, but we see they're all swarthy, right? They're trying to hide it, that all these Spaniards are swarthy, that the Spanish invasion was a Moorish invasion of peace, of pieces and friendships, right? So when Tecumseh is trying to get people on board, Managa, he's trying to get people on board that's already in alliance with this. Now let's talk Chickasaw. Now let's talk Choctaw. Why couldn't they rock with Tecumseh? Why did they sign these treaties of pieces and friendships, man? Right in the smack, doggone middle, 1786 of the Chickamauga, Chickamauga, Chickamauga War. I am this complexion because of slavery. My mom is my complexion because of slavery. Wow. If you think I'm lying, go to McGee, Mississippi. Everybody that's a Womack is related. Black, white, other. We're all. That's the evidence that white Womax are related to black Womax. Maybe they got the title of the Womack. How do you know they're related? Through what? Through what, man? <laughs> Your genealogy test, man? We're not saying it didn't happen. We're not saying that Mr. White Man didn't have a bunch of indigenous, you know, wow. sisters. We're not saying that a family can't be popped off by another seed. We see that happening every day. What we're saying is that your so-called light skin <laughs> ain't a reflect. I mean, her, she might be, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to tell her who she is. You know what I'm saying? Don't project that on the rest of the Nagas, on the rest of the Amaru Khans that are copper color, my love. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? You might be, but a Naga was still with a Naga. And if there were that many whites, then why are they so black? Why is this the first European emperor of the Inca? Because this is what the European look like. So when you say you got European in you, you're still talking Naga. Now, you know who they had as slaves, right? And who did they send over here? They sent a biological chemical weapon over here. The same so-called whites that they had in captivity, they sent them over here to disease us up. Stuff that they were immune to by then or whatever the case, the Black Plague of Europe sent it over here. We're fighting the disease, man, the same as today, right? The tenderoni, they're just playing with our subconscious because we're fighting the same disease. And we know that this psychology is also a disease, man. 
But hey, how to my aqua? Let's go, man. Let's go, man. And I'll lay these planks for you, you know, as we make our dismount. You know, more of the same psychology that she was kicking for African Americans. It represents a legacy of torture, terror, tragedy. So we've been terrorized, we've been tortured, but it don't start there. The symbol is ours. The covenant is ours. It don't start where they begin to uh, torture or not. You know, when you think about think about the swastika. When I say swastika, you say Nazi. You see this, you see hate. Hatred, right? But that's not at all this Tau represents energy, frequency, vibration. So this symbol as an equal cross with arms bent to the right at a degree angles was discovered carved on the 15,000 feet. 15,000 years old were no Nazis was not hatred of what you know he represented at that time period that they took our symbols and that's what they do they crucify Jesus on the cross right now it's just crucifix be fruitful ain't that uh, one of the first codes my knock and multiply health purposes the pattern similar to one that is found naturally occurring on a mammoth, an animal that has been regarded as a symbol of fertility, the energy frequency. From its earliest conception, the symbol is believed to have been positive and encouraging of life. The modern name for the icon derived from swastika, Sanskrit swastika, meaning conductive, conductive, copper color cons, conductive to well being. It has been used by cultures around the world for myriad different purposes throughout history as a symbol in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and stylized crossing Christianity. In ancient Asiatic culture as a pattern in art, Greek currency, medieval Renaissance, Baroque, Baric, uh, architecture, and the Iron Age artifacts. While the symbol has a long history of having a positive connotation, it was forever corrupted. We're talking about the corruption of our symbols, man. She's popping off, right? Based on the corruption. And based on that, and this narrative, right? She's a black history teacher. And what's black history? Black history, wicked history. Black means atrociously wicked, my noggin. So their wicked history, they're picking it up right there in the torture and the pain and wickedness. The wickedness of completely reversing everything, right? So telling us we're from somewhere else, telling us we ain't shit, you know what I'm saying? We don't got nothing, you know, all this stuff. And now she can't even be proud of her own brown skin without thinking about her, you know, family being mixed with these white people. How many Europeans could there be? <laughs> even Benjamin Franklin said that only the English and the Saxons were the primary so-called whites on the whole earth plane. But they got us reversed into thinking that they're the majority and we're the minority. How could it be that this is the European, not just the European, the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V. This should give you a clear depiction of what it looked like when a group you know, of brothers is trying to take out their brothers. The treaties, Morocco, right? To the American agent, why? Because they said it all this, this was all their stuff. This is their stuff, man. It's like making a treaty with themselves, man. Let's go. So you got to see past the flag and own your symbol and reverse the curse. So we stare at it. We let people pop off in their emotions, but 
we really cause a, a diatribe, you know what I'm saying? We cause a conversation about what is a confederate. Good or bad, you can have a confederate, right? Psalms 83, it could be confederate against you or confederate with you. Dragon Canoes setting up a confederacy of the tribes to rock with each other. Tecumse is uniting the tribes as a confederate, a con con. But if you're just looking at their stars and their version of the X or the Tau for African Americans is nothing more than a symbol of terrorism, torture, and tragedy as the swastika is for the Jewish family, so is the Confederate flag to the African American family. This is a narrative, man. This is baloney, man. But because we don't know, you know what I'm saying, uh, anything beyond what they're, they're starting us in a story with no beginning. They're, they're leaving off the beginning and then just throwing you in the middle of the story. And that's called black history. And that's what we're taught, slaves from Africa. What about your tribe in Africa? Oh, we have no history on that. But what about your history right here in the promised land? In 775, Nehemiah Theodore reconquered the American empire of Kalelus, ruled by Sylvanus Totexas or Solomon the Builder with his swan knights and his swan boats. We're talking the royal families, my knight. We're talking the regal Negro. Who was trying to take down this family is what I'm saying. Who took down the Bezantim in, in 1453, one year after the Papu Bull doomed I versus 1452. The next year, the, the Byzantine falls over there, right? We're talking Europe, right? We're talking wow. Russia and Moscow. We're talking all these areas, Constantinople, Mazaka, Managa, Mosak, the founder, back to Moshe, priest kings. Why did they take out the Byzantine one year after this? They went directly to war, hit the Byzantine there. Why after the declaration of independence, right? Did they go directly to war with the Chickamauga? Focus on who they're going directly for first, the Byzantine, the Chickamauga. They must have a connection. And that's why we're surfing away. So for them, it serves as a constant reminder that while this nation fought for the prides and prides itself in its battles for independence, it un underhandedly deprived the people from a distant land the same liberty. Of course, man. <laughs> Because you're the copper color races found here. They weren't going to give you no liberties after they found you. You know what they're going to do? This is what the Pope told them to do. Why are you asking for liberties after you see that this is the declaration of war right here in your face bone? A hop to the bro Lex for this, man. So you have them telling you to your face that they're going to vanquish you, right? <laughs> Capture you, vanquish you, subdue you, Saracens, right? All the enemies up there, Zeus, wh whoever placed your kingdom, what kingdom? Managi, your kingdom. Who is Preston Child? Dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods. All your stuff, man. They're taking everything, huh? Managa, they're taking everything, huh? And put you in perpetual slavery. Perpetually. Ever, ever, ever. And now they can apply and appropriate to himself and his successors, the kingdoms, the dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods to be converted to convert them to his and her and their use and profit by having secured this said faculty the said alfonso by his authority oh do lawfully and justly we possess these islands we taking these lands harbors and seas we can take the water and they do of right belong to pertain to king alfonso 
and all his successors. Successors, yeah. You know, like descendants. So after they found the copper color race here, they took the con and can now give that con your covenant. Your priesthood can now be applied to his successors, descendants of the Europeans born in America. Who? The Europeans. Who? The Europeans. So what? when did you get mixed out with all this white stuff? It happened, but not to create a whole new race of people. Of <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You're the copper color kind of found here, man. Deal with it, man. Deal with it, man. And this is the first European, right? Subsequent first European emperor of the Inca. This ain't no play play, man. Let's go for the dismount. You know, we, you can get this link on your own. You know what I'm saying? Break down some more this Confederate flag. Because the whites would say it's heritage, not hate. Whose heritage? Or the heritage of your invasion. They're worshiping Zeus, right? <laughs> They're worshiping the invasion itself. They're popping off, you know, happy to, you know what I'm saying, celebrate their 4th of July invasion on the what? Swan Knights, the royal family on the American empire. Why do you know it's an American empire? Because the doom diverse is the, the Pope is telling you it's an American empire when he's telling you that he can take your kingdom, your dominion, man, all your gold, right? All your gold, that's how you know this is an empire. American empire of the promised land Kalelis, man. Let's go. And more flights you can see, just like, you know, the system was saying, there's very, this one right here is uh, the Army of Tennessee joint. You know what I'm saying? So you got the Chickamauga on it. Look how many versions of it. This is the mobile Pensacola joint. Whole troops at this joint. They call it the what? St. George Cross. We say, hold up. Wait a minute. Let me put that Hebrew in it. <laughs> now nah, that cross is the Picto Paleo Tau. The mark, the sign, the covenant, the signal the monument tau. You can't hijack the picto. You can't hijack the paleo no more. Body bag for the illusion, man. Body bag for the illusion. So even though it's representing torture and torment or for them, a fake ass heritage of invasion, you got to get out of all that dichotomy, man, if you really want to see clear. Let's go. A little dry here, you know, dig on. You know, if you want to take more on the flag, I'm gonna leave some dry for you. You know what I mean? It's talking about the X. Do you see the big letter X anywhere on the flag? What if I lay it to the side? Do you see it now? The X is formed by big blue bands, which are outlined with white trim. On this big X, there are 13 white stars. You know what they represent? The 13 original United Colonies. It represents the 13 Confederate tribes and protectors of the Mississippi Valleys in the waterways, my night. Yeah, man. <laughs> I think they took everything, right? Do you see clearly now? They can't invent nothing. They're just stealing everything. So don't get charged up by this. Just allow it to encourage you to research your history of who are the Chickamauga and why they went to war with them for the first 20 plus years, right? 30, 40 years up until the Tecumseh War is all the same Chickamauga. It took them 
40 something years just to take out this particular group of who they call militant Cherokee. And we don't celebrate our Nagas on the front lines. They, they came with all their artillery and still didn't take these Nagas out for 40, 50 something years, my Naga. This is where you come from. You weren't dropped off on no damn boat. You're the copper color cons that were fighting here from the top. You're the Chickamauga, they call you, but let's go. St. George Cross, come on, man. 13 original Collins. Well, who's the originals? You know, I, I guess that's going to be more important, man. Who's the originals, man? They say this is the true Confederate flag right here. Okay. All right. Confederate States. All right. Whatever, man. Whatever. Let's go. Another link dropping on this. St. Andrew, the patron saint of Scotland. I right, well, they want to focus on St. Andrew, but they don't want to focus on the, the Andrew's coat of arms, right? All these links, and you don't see this come up no time, right? You got to find this out on your own. You got to connect to Andrew's on your own, my noggin. Because they're not going to give it to you, right? They're not gonna give it to you, right? Wow. Wow. Copper color Naga stand up. Yeah, yeah. You can dig on this on your own, man. But uh you know, formerly known as the stars and bars, comprised of three stripes, red, white and red on the upper left corner, all right, seven stars on it. A large degree of Southern population was of Scottish and I, come on, man. They keep taking it to Scotland and you go to Scotland and what you gonna find, you? You gonna find who? What you gonna find, man? Scotia of Egypt. Why Scotia of Egypt? First of all, where's Egypt? <laughs> Second of all, we're talking Grand Canyon again. Third of all, you must be talking about those, uh, how they say, uh, what they say, the Hyksos. Oh yeah, the Hyksos Pharaohs of Egypt, right? The Shepherd King. You gotta dig on the Hicksos, but let's go. There's a gang of different crosses. You know, these are more popular ones. You got the Andrews joint, Maltese, got the Greek. Again, you're just talking about the Picto Tau, Latin, patriarchal, papal cross. You can dig on all these tiles, but they're all gonna be tiles. You know, they're all gonna be tiles. Now, when you get to this flag specifically, and when it's, you know what I'm saying, rock, you're talking 1863, what they call the Battle of the Chickamauga, the fatal Shabbat, my Shalom to my dog. You dig? This fatal Shabbat. They're calling it. Memoir of Chickamauga, but they're not going to even mention the people in this whole article. They're just going to talk about some romanticized version of the war. Of course, they said it's the bloodiest war, right? 35,000 of the Confederate Army, man. So, you know, they put us on the front lines. They're fighting right in, in that Chickamauga River situation. Thomas Course was beaten, routed, and in full retreat at sundown of that fatal Sabbath day. <laughs> Why? Is, what's the Sabbath got to do with this? <laughs> what's the Sabbath got to do with this? 
and what's happening in 1863. Back to the uh, war. Line up now, All right, let's go. We line them up. Anything see what's happening? All right, the American Civil War. This is all that you might have. And what else is happening? The Texas Indian Wars, Southwest, and all the Nagas in the Southwest are fighting. The Navajo, the Apache, the California Indians, which is why we got that Texas Street, Cali Street, Texas Heart. And Texas Street, Cali Heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got a strong Cali, Texas connection. We we fighting side by side during this same super battle they're having. I mean, how does all this make sense? How's all these wars going down? And that's supposed to be something separate. They want to pitch this to us like it's something separate, like nothing else is going on. But they're a little certain. Why is number so high? Because during that same exact time that they're having this little skirmish they're also having a california indian war an apache war a cheyenne war a texas indian war a colorado war a go shoot war a southwest indian war a whole war but we only supposed to focus on their little situation. they're not mentioning us they're not even talking about the chicken magua this is that play play man it's that play play in real time or not. So it's all about perception. It's all about perception, my not. Right, let's get cozy, man, you know. I got booted out into my car, man. I got to finish strong in my car because I'm dedicated my Nagas, man. This is about, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've been trying to record this drop right here, man. Uh, for about three or four days now. And craziest stuff's been happening to my laptop. You know, the recordings have just disappeared as soon as I'm done with them. I can't find them. I can't download them. I've been trying different software. You know, now you see me trying this Zoom thing out. It's, it is what it is, man. It's long to get this drop out. And, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just finishing strong, man, for my Nagas on the Shabbat. You know what I mean? And I know this must be some real important drop, man, because they ain't never put in so much work to, you know, discourage a Naga. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know who they're dealing with. I'm sorry. They don't know who they fucking with, right? Wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. The fortune is the unity. <laughs> Managi, you're proving it in real time. The fortune is the unity. Because we know that we got Kogi Managas. We got you. We got a united force, and with a united force, it takes little effort from everybody. Just a little effort. All you got to do is say that we're united. That we can get this done. That these people ain't bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That the tribe needs help. That the tribe is building. We might not be building in your time or the way you want us to build. This ain't about you, Managi. It's about hitting the mark. It's so popping off, my noggin, with my tribe, man. <laughs> you dig it, man? You see clearly, man? Hey. That's my trap trap. Let's go. I'm going to keep flowing, throwing heat. That's my trap trap. Must bow out to the ether feed. That's my trap trap. Put them folks saying like me. That's my trap trap. Over here, banging on me. That's my trap trap. Can't get around me. I got 360. That's my trap trap. I'm going to keep flowing, throwing heat. That's my trap trap. Thought I was empty. Him on my life, like then I found my chicken, my gorgeous in my trap trap. 
but I give her wall on my pretty most high. I feel like the walking soul in the sky, sky. You don't know all that I'm a be, I'm a trap. Come on, they come in and leave, that's my trap. I ain't tryna outside nobody, that's my trap. I just wanna share my energy, that's my life. Over here, banging on B, that's my trap. Let's go. Over here, help me carry me, that's my trap. Cause it's M H O E, you know what I'm saying? Around here, man, it's M H O E. Most over everything, man. You know, when my, you know, what I'm saying, you know, was down to, you know, this wave and you know, put the gear out for the noggins, you know, put the most everything on the chest bone and you know, what I'm saying on the head bone. You know what I mean? Like, it's right here, my nuts, everything. We know how sadistic the fashion industry is behind the scenes, you know? So we're creating our own confederacy. They call it an industry. It's a con, it's a confederacy of cons, man, that's tribing up. And yet we have our own fashion flow we popping off. We got our own clothing we popping off. Um, inspiration or on vibration when you put this on you know it's coming straight from the heart bone of the spiral my not m h o e most high over everything every time i look at this i got this exact hat on my desk every time i walk in you know what i'm saying my my office space <laughs> and i see this hat my vibe goes so high like i could just imagine the naga asking me What's that mean, homie? M H O E, man. What's that mean, man? <laughs> I'm like most high over everything, man. It's like most high over everything, huh? Man, I could dig that, man. Most high over, man. Where can I get some of that M H O E, man? You let them know it's dropping soon, man. Right in the drop shop, man. <laughs> Shout out to my jigging. Shout out to yourself. We got a mem sauce clothing line coming out. This is the M H O E flow. And uh, look out for the mem sauce, man, because that mem sauce is that water, that drip, man, that flow, that's mama, that's that, that's that, uh, you know, strong blood, my nut. You know what I'm saying? That mem sauce, that's the consciousness, that's the, that's the energy frequency, that's the frame of shape, man. That's that mem, my nagi. That's that towel, my nagi. You know what I'm saying? That's a, you know, that's the wave. You know, the mem sauce is the wave, so. We popping off, man. Clothing lines, we popping off. You know what I'm saying? On the radio flow, we popping off, period. We're doing it for the tri tribe of music, my naga. We're popping off tribe of music, man. You know what I'm saying? It's the vibration. This is like that King Dave, you know, David in the heart, the Lear, my naga. Tribe of music. Tribe of music, man, is, is everything. We don't gotta sell albums, man. We are going to our packs, our our ether packs, right? <laughs> so we got our own flow. We don't need no music industry. We don't need no fashion industry. We got tribal music. We got tribal mafia. 
travel via okay. conglomerate, my naga. All my naga is dropping that drop. You know, the artists, producers, the engineers, man, everybody that's involved in the process, everybody that will be a part of our future swag frequency events. Look out for the swag frequency events where the Nagas can come together and perform their joints and good frequency together that 432 tribal mafia, man. I'm talking CJ Battle, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm talking natural by law. I'm talking Tecum Sam. I'm talking Dizzle Fetty, Kara Mayo, Kuri Mayo, Five Eyes Ma. Now I'm talking Yosef the Real and Nine Spiral Nagi. I'm talking maybe the hijacker Cezanne. I'm talking tribal mafia, man. Hey, it's an honor to serve this way. Hey, check this out, man. The Battle of Chickamauga resulted in 34,624 casualties, the second highest number during the Civil War. Second highest number, huh? <laughs> it was the most significant Union defeat. So they celebrated with their flag, right? Hey. <laughs> they celebrated with they flag, you know, uh, because it was a big Confederate war. I mean, a, 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 a big Confederate victory, right? It's a big victory for the Confederate side, right? So we have Nagas that are just proud of that, right? They say, oh, man, you know, I'm just a uh, happy man to have served in this war. Or we were fighting for this. And other Nagas say we was fighting for this, for that. But we were promised this. But we were promised that. But John just says, hey, man, what? <laughs> okay, let's just pop off, man. Let's burn the flag. Let's drape ourselves in it. Everything is all happening over here, man. Shout out to Brandon Reed. And then the Gentile, right, <laughs> says, hey, man, this is my heritage, too. It's heritage, not hate. And the black man says, yeah, man, I fall in the war, man. You know what I mean? It's a hi to the family because some fought on this side, some fought on that side. A lot of our indigenous Nuggets died because they believed in a certain part of the cause. They just had hope. They're coming from a place of trust. Even when they're being, you know, faced with this tyranny, they still have a bit of trust. Like, if I fight for you, I, I get this. We see now in high side 2020, we didn't get a goddamn thing. So who was right the whole time? We're talking to Kunse, we're talking Dragon Canoe. They said no deals, no treaties, man. No treaties of pieces and friendships, man. We all lost, man. Some are just proud to be involved, man, right? Hey, man, some just be popping off, man. Hey, different perspectives, right? So you got this I fought in the war perspective, and then you got a Tecumseh no treaty perspective. And, you know, what's Karen Cooper's perspective, man? <laughs> Slavery of choice. So that's what my sister was popping off against. So some say slavery is a choice. Some say a heritage or hate. So she's triggered, you know what I'm saying, by this conversation, this dichotomy that's being had, which is really just a dichotomy. You know what I'm saying? It's really just a dichotomy, man. because we're talking symbols. A moment's reflection reveals that the heritage versus hate slogan, war is a false dichotomy. So we're caught in a thought spell, arguing two different sides to something that is not the point, is not the mark. No one's talking about the mark. You're, you're busy talking heritage or hate, and nobody's talking about the mark, the sign, or the covenant, my Nagi. I said the mark, I said the sign, I said the covenant, my night. I'm not here to talk about the flag. I'm here to talk about the covenant. I don't do it for the fucking flag. I do it for our covenant. 
we keep that water flowing for the covenant. Cause drop nation, drop nation, you got the water. You got that mem sauce. And we know that to get that mem sauce, it gotta be M H O E. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it got to be M H O E, where fear means nothing. Hey, five eyes mind, we popping off. Now dropping. Wow. Wow. Heritage or hate, man. Dichotomy, false dichotomy. There is no reason why the Confederate flag cannot stand for both heritage and hate. All right, you know, <laughs> or stand for a myriad of other things, right? Oh, a myriad of other things, such as what? Mark, sign, covenant. Come, come, come. The heritage versus hate equation also generalizes a single interpretation. This is what we're talking about. When my sister's popping off, she's charged up based on a single interpretation. Of the symbols meaning. When my noggins is charged up, they come over here, they're watching the video. They see this, they say, I have a single interpretation of the meaning of this symbol. See the flag, they're blinded to the symbol. But you're the dragon. Managa. Managa, you're the meteor. <laughs> We're gonna get this for the dismount. Managa. You're the person that's fierce against the hijack. You're the male, you're the female that's violent towards the hijack. Because this man, this woman is the dragon, my Wow. Wow. If you're a dragon, you know. If you're a dragon. If you're a burning one, if you're a dragon based on etymology, if you're a dragon word, then you see clearly. If you're a dragon, you are seeing clearly. Hawa, because you are seeing to see. I have seen the light. Which light? It must be the light that's not visible to them, but is visible to you. That gives you a deadly glance to them. It's deadly. See how they put it in parentheses? It's not truly deadly, you know, to you, right? But to the hijack, they're saying this glance is deadly. This glance is deadly. When these noggins see clearly, that is deadly. When these noggins see clearly, it becomes fierce and violent to the hijack, these people are dragons. They are seeing clearly 360 dragonfly perspective. Dichotomy, symbol, single interpretation of the symbol you're not seeing clearly if all you see is Confederate KKK. You don't even comprehend the 13 stars. You definitely don't comprehend the Tau. Let's go for the dismount, man. Let's talk on this dragon canoe, man. Let's get with it. We're talking about the priest cons. We said the Chickamauga Cherokee wish to make, or, you know, they were separated from those that wished to make treaties. Chickamauga 
So let's talk about those that wish to make treaties. These treaties are the pieces of friendship. Hey, man, if I need something, you got me. I can't join the other side, and you can't join the other side. We got to stay out of it. We got to stay out of it, right? 1786. 1786. We got to stay out of it, boss. If these fierce, violent dragons are going to war, you can't help them dragons out. Okay, boss. Does that give us free pass, boss? Yeah, let's shake on it. Let's shake on it. Seeds of destruction. I can't make this stuff up. Who's Dragon Canoe? Let's go. Dragon Canoe or Sayu Gansini. He is dragging his canoe. Was a Cherokee war chief who led a band of Cherokee wars. He led the Hebrew Israelites who resisted colonists, who resisted the invaders, United States settlers, my naga. Who's this treaty against with the pieces and the friendships proclaimed by the president of the United States, right? Delivered to the American agent, right? United States of America. So. so he's resisting these these pieces and he's resisting these people, Managa, that are conquering, right? Stepping in the lineage of the Inca, right? Taking over the lineage of Tupac, right? Tupac attack, huh? during the American Revolution. And afterward, Dragon Canoe's forces were sometimes joined by Upper Muskegee, sometimes. So he wasn't able to tribe them up all the time, but sometimes it worked with the Upper Muskegee. The Lower Muskegee, no. Sometimes it worked with the Chickasaw and the Shawnee. And when he died, he had finally created an alliance with the Choctaws as well. But that alliance wasn't able to be kept because they needed pieces and friendships, man. And their chief at the time said, no, we got peace with these people. We don't want no war with these people. So Tecumseh was left to die. And this, if you're going to claim your tribe, you're going to claim all this, you got to claim it all, Jack. You're going to have to claim it all. Where were you? in Tecumseh's war. And don't you know we would have been stronger together? Let's go. Now we see it clearly, because we can put this together, A plus B equals C, we see it. You can't front on this, man. The truth got a frequency, and we all got to hold ourselves accountable. The Israelite got to hold ourselves accountable. The tribes of David got to hold ourselves accountable. We're not being together where two sticks should be joined we're fighting against each other nehemiah and sylvanus solomon we got to hold ourselves accountable for our own you know breaking the code because we're not supposed to be slaying each other and when dragon canoe is finally saying let's stop killing each other let's keep the code some people was with the code and many people were more with the treaties a piece of friendship to deal with the devil. And it was replaced in 1836. Back to the war chart. What's happening in 1836? Oh, Cherokee Indian War. Creek War. The Creeks were allied with the Kumsay Shawnee and so were the Seminole. 
These are the same Nagas the whole damn time. All this Cherokee Indian are the same Chickamauga. The Coon say himself was in the Chickamauga War late 1780s, man. Barbary War, what is the Hebrew word of the day? Barber, swan, yeah, swan knights. Knights, Monaga. You are the knights, Monaga. You're the knights. <laughs> That's why you rocking. With your armor, my naga, and your shield, my naga. You're the knights. You're the knights, right? You're the knights, Ka. And they took your emblem, they took your crest, they took your wisdom, they took your Ka, they took your clan, your Ross, your Rus, they took your kingdoms, your dukedoms, they took Managa, your principalities, your possessions, your movable and immovable goods, your gold, your things. We say, where's our things? Where's our stuff, man? We want our real stuff back, not paper and plastic. They put us in perpetual forever slavery, right? Because as long as we sleep in that Ruach Tardy Ma, our stuff can go to their successors. Our kingdom can go to their successors. The dragons are being hijacked. What's a meteor? We're about to get that for the dismount. <laughs> Our kingdom went to their descendants, found me, right? <laughs> they said, oh, these aboriginals are the American. So now they call themselves Americans, but they're not aboriginals. They're not original people. They're not copper colored races calling themselves American today, are they? No. And they definitely were not found here. No, by the Europeans, which Europeans? No, but now applied to the successors, the descendants of the Europeans born in America. So first the title went to who? The title went to the first European emperor of the Inca, Holy Roman, Emperor Charles V. My Naga. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, man. Who were these treaties with? People that look just like you. More on more war. But they all can't be great. Or else, you know, you wouldn't be coming for our stuff. You don't see us coming for your stuff because we have all the stuff already. You don't see us making these deals, Managa, because we have inheritance here, our inheritance here. Let's get it. I will gather them on every side, Ezekiel 37. Let's go. 21. Say to them, thus says Hawa, behold, I will take the children of Israel. We're not saying more, right? We're talking about the tribe of Jacob, Yaakov, from among the nations, whether they are gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. What land, my nugget? Kalelu. Why are these swords popping up in Arizona, my nugget? Huh? Why are they popping up in Arizona, Anaga? Why are they calling it a Jewish Catholic state in the medieval America, man? They're saying Hebrew, Cathay, 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 original China is Cathay, original Cathay is Katai, Kara, black or swarthy, Cathay means pure land, pure land, promised land. They're saying there's artifacts in the promised land of America. Right in your face, man. American empire, this is what they took when they took your kingdoms, your dukedoms, 
counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, goods, and they converted them to their own profit. But you didn't even know you had a kingdom over here, huh? You didn't even know this was the old world, huh? And who's protecting you, man? Who's the last line of defense? The Chickamauga, the Chickamauga, the Chickamauga. After this fell, everything fell. Can't you see? I can't you see. They went from that to shit. Let's go to Mexico. <laughs> hey, hey, let's go to the Philippines. Ofer, let's go. More gold. Uh, let's go. Banana Wars, wherever we want to go. Let's go. World War II, let's just pop off now. Now we have the United States as we know it, patriotism. Now we are completely indoctrinated. But you know who was indoctrinated, man? You know who saw clearly, man? The chicken mogul. The chicken mogul saw clearly because that's what a dragon do to see clearly. The chicken mogul saw clearly because they're following a dragon. They're following a dragon, a dragon canoe. Let's get clarity on this name. Dragon Canoe. Now that we can see clearly, Dragon Canoe became the preeminent war leader among the Indians of the Southeast. The Nagas right here. He served as war chief or Skagusta, Skagusta, of the group known as the Chickamauga Cherokee or Lower Cherokee. Until his death in 1792. Right here. Tecumseh was there. Tecumseh was fighting in that war. That was a little homie at the time. And he kept it going. And he asked for the tribes to unite one more time, man. And they couldn't do it. Because they already made the deals, man. He was sometimes joined by a few. Son of Atakula Kula, a little carpenter, Neoni, Oli, Tame Do, both parents had been born to other tribes, taken captive in the war, adopted by the Cherokee families who raised them in their own tradition. What tradition, my man? Talking about code keepers or else they wouldn't be going to war like this man you know what i'm saying it wouldn't be war on them they're calling them enemies of their zeus right his father was born to the nipsing near lake superior his mother was born to the Natchez and adopted as a daughter of okanastota's wife his family lived with the overhill cherokee on the little tennessee river in what is now called southeast tennessee dragon canoe survived smallpox at a young age which left his face marked According to the Cherokee legend, he was given his name because of an incident in his childhood when he wanted to join the war party moving against the Shawnee. His father said that he could accompany the war party as long as he could carry his canoe. The youth tried to prove his readiness for war, but could only drag the heavy canoe. So they want to spin his name into literally dragging a canoe. Then they're going to say that his name incited fear in the enemies and then you're going to see clearly that his name ain't about dragging no damn canoe. <laughs> it's about the dragon. And some even said that his canoe was able to fly and all this other stuff, right? So we're talking about a dragon, but let's keep going. On that uh, mistrulmystery.org. You know, right here, this dragon canoe is considered by historians to be a role model to a young Tecumseh. So when Tecumseh is popping off, he's right in the footsteps of dragon canoe. They want to give them, give us their images, right? <laughs> their proxies, but we know what time it is already. Managa, we know what time it is already. Managa, let's go. It says the name Dragon Canoe struck fear in the hearts. Why? Because he's dragging a canoe? <laughs> Let's go. Of early settlers in what was the Western North Carolina, Cara, right? 
Karakata Cafe. Here we go. Considered by historians to be the greatest Cherokee military leader. So you're talking about one of the greatest Nagas of all time, man. He led raiding parties that attacked settlements for over a decade. He was jamming these hijacks up wherever they tried to settle on his land. He was defending his land over a decade head on. Following the Declaration of Independence, right? 1776, here they go. The signing of the treaty of Sycamore Shoals that granted lands to white settlers near modern day Johnson City, Elizabethtown, Greenville, Tennessee, Dragon Canoe vehemently opposed the treaty, man. He was always opposing these damn treaties. He felt the proclamation of 1763 overruled it and that the land seated under it still belonged to the Cherokee or the indigenous Nagas. He said, nah, you can't have none of this. So he jammed them up <laughs> straight up, right? So, man. You know, Dragon Canoe distinguished himself in a battle against the Red Coast, later joined the alliance by the Cherokee with several other tribes and the British to attack the settlements of the Eastern Tennessee. So because some of these Brits, but these Brits were still swarthy and this still might have been part of their family for all we know, and they were together, you know, jamming up these hijacks of the United States today. Not the current British, but the Naga British, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So he got someone in to help him to get these guys. And that's why Tecumseh was also making an alliance with the same Naga British, not the white boys, right? He led one of the major attacks against the settlers and quickly got the reputation of being one of the biggest opponents against of the settlements. So he was one of the biggest ops, <laughs> right, to the hijack. Following the devastation during the Cherokee War, leader of the tribe wanted to sue for peace. Now they want to make peace. So some of the Cherokee wanted to make peace, right? That's why the Chickamauga are a group that's separated from the greater body that what? The majority of the Cherokee wanted to make peace with the so-called Americans, with the, you know, with the agents of America, right? They want to make peace with the devil now. Hey, maybe they felt like they was preserving their families and yada, yada, yada. But now we see hindsight, they didn't preserve nothing. Or maybe it did preserve them longer, you know, you know, they had their treaties, right? So they couldn't go into slavery, you know, hey, they said, we'll get preserved a little longer. But what is the most high going to have to say about that when the two sticks are coming together and become one in my hand? He's not going to say Moorish Empire, Moors of Morocco. <laughs> no, he's going to call out the Jews in Managa. Presta Khan is going to look out for the tribe and raise them up, the real Nagas, with the real things, with the real covenant, my Naga. Same for everybody, especially when you've been selling this out the whole damn time. But that spell is over. That spell is done, man. That, that spell you cast on us, oh, boy. The leaders of these Cherokee wanted to peace man but not dragon canoe right dragon canoe and others disagreed he led the cherokee and other tribes south back to his birthplace they settled near the chickamauga creek right so that's what they called him chickamauga and returned to terrorize settlers man so they were terrors to the hijack man these are ogs man attacking them and continuing to pressure them to leave then retreated back to their new towns they were given the name Chickamauga after the creek they settled on, even though they were still members of the various tribes. There were various tribes under this title of the Chickamauga. And some said that they were called Chickamauga because they were a militant group, right? So Dragon Canoe was going in, man, in Virginia and Kentucky. Dragon Canoe was going in everywhere. Dragon Canoe assumed more of a diplomatic role later in his life. Uh, working on preserving Cherokee culture and establishing an alliance with the Creeks and the Shawnees. So they say legend has it that he died from a heart attack or exhaustion after dancing all night, celebrating recent attacks in the Cumberland Plateau area and a new alliance. So he finally got he finally got a new alliance, right? He got his old alliances 
He got his own tribe that's already tribing up. But finally, he got some of the Muscogee on board and he got some of the Choctaw on board. And he was dancing with joy and died. That's what the legend says, right? What what really happened? <laughs> Once he let them in, what, what really happened? Who were these uh, Choctaw? Who were these Muscogee? You know what I'm saying? That were present when he was dancing and suddenly died from a heart attack. Did they just join the alliance? Because, you know, they already had an alliance. They can't join this side. It's a part of their treaty. No, no. If either party shall be at war with any other nation, the other party shall not take a commission from the enemy, nor fight under their colors. They can't join you, man. They can't join you, Dragon Canoe. So what did they do? We don't know, you know, but it's very peculiar, you know, hindsight 2020, that something about this alliance caused the death of the dragon. And he's a role model to to Combe say, let's go. Now, check this out. We're talking dragon canoe. They're talking about dragging a canoe. This is interesting, man. <laughs> right? This is a history dragon canoe. Say you go and see me. This is a quote. Such treaties may be all right for men who are too old to hunt or fight. As for me, I have young warriors about me. We will hold our land. Yeah, you too old. You too scared to fight. Maybe the treaty's for you. As for me, I have young cons, man, about me. We will hold our land. Yeah, man. I'm talking the Nagas, man. Not the proxies that they're giving us. We know who we are. What's it say over here? What's it say over here, man? So you got the C.U. Gunsi, Gusini, right? Native name, English name, Dragon Canoe, or Andrew Brown. <laughs> Body bag. For the, you know this is a noggin, <laughs> right? Andrew Brown, right? Now, do you think this guy's name is Andrew Brown? <laughs> Let's go. Alternate names, Kui, Kana, Kana, right? Khan, he's the Khan, Kana, Sina, Sina, or Savage, Napoleon. Uh-oh. Or Dragon. So we have to get a third link to put it all together when they're trying to tell us for that his name, you know, struck fear. The name Dragon Canoe struck fear in the hearts of the settlers. Fear. But they're not saying dragon, they say dragging canoe. Then you have to go from this MitchellInHistory.org to the NTVS.com and see that his name is alternative, alternatively dragon. So called by his enemies, and this is why it struck fear. What's gonna strike fear? Dragging canoe or dragon? The dragon that what? sees clearly the dragon that who is the media <laughs> is the comment we're going to talk about the kumsay's comment for the dismount is the violent person yeah that's the kumsay that's dragon canoe that's the chickamauga the fierce of violent male and female right The dragon. Wow. <laughs> wow, man. This is beautiful. You know, this is a victory lap. So he had his alliance finally with the Muscogee and the Choctaw. He also had a very small cut from a rifle ball on the side of his, on his side that went unattended and became infected. It was normal after each battle that the chief and his warriors dance and give thanks to Yawa, uh oh. 
right? So we see that we got our Y, and if they want to translate Yahweh, but we know we're talking creator, not Jesus, right? We know, we know we're not talking no JC, which is why they called us enemies of Christ, right? And a dumb diverses and other enemies of Christ. So they came over here to a land of people that was rocking directly with Hawa, right? They say Yahwa. What they mean is that Hawa, which is the what? The fifth and the sixth letter, Monaga. After your strong power enters your family, your house, your floor plan, you got a plan, you get on foot, you gather, you walk, you tribe up, you enter that door, that entrance together, and you get your breath and you get your security, your hawa, then you get your cut off nourishment, your food, my naga, Shabbat Shalom. Seventh letter, seventh day. They say, Yahwa, nah, they mean hawa. He gave Ahab to the creator. He gave Ahab to the creator. Ah, man. He wasn't talking about no Yahweh's. Nah, uh, we, we got to get to the root, right? We're talking about people. That's what they're getting. Jehovah based on what? The Yahweh is backwards. Go backwards. Reverse the curse. Hawa. Uh, Hawa. Uh, they just spinning it around like usual. Reverse the curse, break the spell, keep the code. So this Yahweh is based on the assumption of the tetragrammaton is the imperfective. So they're assuming that this tetragrammaton is imperfect. Is the imperfective of the Hebrew verb hawa. What they meant with this was this. They put the Y on it earlier form of Heya. So Hawa was earlier than Heya, which is why we get back to our Hawa in the sense of the one who is the existing, the what existing, the what the breath of security, breath security, Hawa. They go in reverse. They try to get their Yahweh's by putting a Y on it which does not represent your yad. Their yah is something different. You have to differentiate between your yah and their yah. By the time they put this thing, the dates, 18, 12, I don't know. I can't get this shit up. When I get, what's happening 18, 12? We already got it. The war of 1812 is the Kumsay's war. This was your fall. You think it's a coincidence, 1812, say 1812, yeah? They're making an, excla an exclamation of defiance or dismissal towards the what? The creator. Who's rocking with the creator? Who's rocking with Hawa? Not Yahwa, Hawa. Dragon canoe. It was normal after each battle that the chief and his warriors dance and give thanks to the creator. But to them, you're just the enemies of Christ. How does that make sense? How can you be the enemies of Christ and rock with the creator at the same time? Unless they have a different creator. Papu Vu, Domenico De Vicio says that the frame and the shape is the most frequently mentioned powers right here in America. That this was the power of the Old Testament or the Tanakh had a different power than their new test, new covenant. We ain't stepped in that lane yet. We ain't got the cross sticks together yet, my naga. These sticks. Nation of defiance or dismissal. They put the Yah on it and said that it was the Yud. 
You gotta know, you gotta choose your yah, you gotta choose your you, man, your yad. This ain't got nothing to do with your hand or work or throw. But if it is about the work, then how can you have it before the Shabbat? You walk through that door, you got your breath of security. You didn't get that work. <laughs> can you take your work into the Shabbat? No, that's why the work comes after the Shabbat, right? After the cutoffness, then you gradually get to that work, right? That worship. But the creator's name is not worship. The creator's name is existence. The breath of security is your existence. Every time you inhale, <gasps> you see that AH with the ha, the AH, the <gasps> ah, reveal. <gasps> What happens when you see something amazing? <gasps> and then you exhale. Wow, that's your security. There. That's that's that dragon fire, man. But a dragon can't have no fire without that breath, my nugget. That's the inhale, feminine, exhale, masculine. Frame or shape or my nugget. I can't make this up. It just makes too much sense. Common sense when you see clearly and you know that you got to choose up. You got to reverse it. Oh, wow. You got to reverse it. The e verb. You can't hijack that. No angel can hijack that. No one can hijack the indigenous Hebrew, my night, which takes you back to the ancient love song before the hijack. Hijack free. Hawa. Popping off. Fifth and sixth letter. When you enter through the dough, you get it immediately. You're framing your mama, your mama with her arms raised. Not your father. Your mama's greeting you with your with your breath. She's giving you that revelation, the real revelation. Then you get hooked in. Then you get secure, my naga. That's your frame of shaper. Zan Zan. Shabbat Shalawan. Let's pop off, man. Dragon Canoes rocking with the creator. Dragon Canoes rocking with Hawa. So what's up with this alliance, man, for the dismount? Hey, shallow bomb to the tribe. Let's go, man. We ain't on no play play right now, man. We charged up, my nugget. My nugget's charging up, man. Don't it feel good to have that spark? To feel that charge? Some people don't feel this, man. But my nuggets, we feel this. It's one try, one vibe, man. Wow. wow. They want to be on that play, play. <laughs> like I said, I've been dropping this for three days straight. They finally said, man, let me uh, get this link out of here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, so this link is dealing with Takum say visiting the chief and Mingos throughout the Chalkasaw and Choctaw nations with the plea to band together, just like Dragon Canoe, right? And a confederacy to oppose the hijack. If they try to block it, man, we're gonna try to find a way around it. It's crazy, cause I've been dropping it for three days straight. We popping off, man. And now they saying this page ain't working. That's man, they on this play play. It's all good, Monaga. It's all your smile. Told y'all, man, that they doing every stop is dry. Literally three days of working on this every time, you know, every time they come with they the interference pattern, man. Oh, 
this one got some sources too, though. You know, I'm just surfing the wave at this point. It's one way. The water continues, my night. So it was happening with Tecumseh and Pasha Mata, who's the chief of Choctaw. They're debating, right? And the Chickasaw Council, 1811. Okay, okay. Let's get a piece of this. This about my night. Tecumseh was a Shawnee warrior and chief born outside of Killicoth, Ohio, 1780. 68, the Shawnee supported the British during the revolution, only to watch the Ohio Territory fall under American control, the United States hijack control following the war. 1787, right? Remember that piece of, <laughs> that treaty was what? 1786, con, con, let's go. So a year after that treaty, 1787, Northwest ordinances encouraged Americans or the hijacks to move westward to the Ohio Territory where they encountered Indian nations like the Shawnee, Delaware, and Mingo. President George Washington ordered troops into Ohio to ensure the safety of white hijack Americans, right? Resulting in the first wave of Indian removal under the command of General, so this is all General Washington, right? Uh, How's that connected to Washita? Back to the more and more war, right? General Mad Anthony Wayne, U.S. troops waged war against the Indians living in the Northwest Territory. Tecumse joined the Indian independence movement, fighting in several battles, including the final and bloodiest Battle of Falling Timbers, 1794. Let's check out our war chart. 1794. They said this was the bloodiest one. Tecumseh had been there already leading up to this War of 18, 12, and 11. And this Tecumseh comment, this dragon popping off for the dismount, let go. So that was 1794, Falling Timbers. All right. 1809, General William Henry Harrison coerced several Indian tribes, he tricked or he got more Nagas against each other, living in a region to cede 3 million acres of land to white settlers. 3 million acres, man. How you just get 3 million acres upon a Naga? Harrison made a fortune while in and out the office from the land he secured as part of the Treaty of Greenville, facing another removal of Indian, Indians across the Great Lakes region formed a pan-Indian independence movement or a confederacy or a khanate or, you know, they tribed up, 1811, Tecumse now a leader of the independence movement traveled to the south, southern nations hoping to rally support for the resistance movement. While Tecumse campaigned in the south, U.S. troops now under the direction of General Governor Harrison attacked the religious community or the Hebrews, Monaga, because how could they be religious if they're just enemies of Christ, right? Because <laughs> they're rocking with the creator only, right? Established by Tecumseh's brother and Shawnee prophet. So his brother was called a prophet, Tenskawatawa. Tenskawatawa is a prophet, right? Sounds like Moshe, sounds like Aaron Flow, Tip of Canoe, Tenskawatawa. Tenskawatawa died in the ensuing Battle of Tippecanoe, and Tecumseh returned to the Indian Territory on the eve of the War of 1812. Tecumseh and many Shawnee allied with the British, so they had some other Nagas, you know what I'm saying, that they were trying to use them to help with whatever they could, right? This is their last stand. They're trying to do the last, this the last thing they got. While the Choctaw and Chickasaw allied with the Americans, man. You see it right here, man. I can't make this stuff up. You claim your tribe today, claim your tribe, but claim it all the way. And we all got to be accountable to come together. We all got to be accountable to come together. We got to be accountable to keep the code and come together. Don't just say, oh, I'm this. I'm, I'm a this. I'm a that. Well, where were you? 
in the bloodiest battle at the time of the last stand. Where were you, my naga? We got to take accountability for our forefathers, our ancestors. We got to bear that, that, you know what I'm saying, energy. We got to bear it to be forgiven, man, for leaving our brothers hanging, for not tribing up, for breaking the code. The Kumsay died 1813 during the Battle of Thames. Right here. That's why they stopped calling it the Kumsay's War, but they continued, right? Because you got the Creek War, and the Creek were allied with the Kumsay. Then you got the Barbary. What? Hebrew word of the day? The Swan? Yeah, you got the Swan Knights still rocking strong. Hmm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you put that thousand years back, <laughs> you're right here in the thick of things with the Barbaries in real time, right? <laughs> yeah, man. The night's in real time. And it's too much fun to surf this wave and it's, you know, we give honors and when we dig on this flag, you know, there's a reason why I got that chicken mob on. I dig on who's the chicken mob up to five eyes mob back here. This is where we need to be right here. And this is what they keep trying to stop, man. We keep the water floor because we just talking uh the dragon right yeah the dragon is also <laughs> the dragon is also the media love to elizabeth warner 2003 wrote a beautiful connection and published uh this article on dragons as meteors or comets wow. <laughs> right, so we know that we're going to talk about a comet in 1811, the same year as the Kumse dying, or, or the same war that's popping off. Managa, we know that these, you know, dragons in this etymological dictionary are just stars with a tail, Managa. Stars with a tail. <laughs> All right, man. I mean, look, man. We're talking a star with a tail. Hold up, man. Let me uh, adjust my adjust my frequency up with some of this uh, tribe of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serotonin in the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Melatonin in my swing. Hey, man. Shout out to Five Eyes, Ma. Tyler made a beat. Tyler made a beat. Tyler made a beat. <laughs> Star with a tail, man. 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 Tribe up music in the background while we make this, you know, beautiful uh, dismount here, man. Start with a tail, man. What does it mean to you? A shooting star, right? Shining military leader to Kumse, whose name was translated as Shooting Star. Make sure we good, you know. Using this stuff for the first time, man. <laughs> like this is my last, my last effort, man. This is like my third time recording this. I'm using new stuff here, man. 
Uh, I never used Zoom before, you know, for screen sharing. So we'll, we'll see how this works, man. You know what I mean? But Hawaii, Hawaii, you get this transmission, that's a miracle, man. It's been three days of recording the same drop, but every time I, you know, I learn something new every time. So, you know, it, it only got sharper with time. And I, the quote say, is the shooting star. The shooting star, Managi, right? Strevnesky's Dictionary of Old Russian covers usage in the medieval period has no entries for meteor or comet, so that don't even exist. But what it does, but they do have one for star with a tail. So a comet or a meteor, originally when this word was first being used in the Russian, what's it got to do with the Russian? The Russian, I said the Russian. <laughs> What do dragons have to do with these roosters, man? <laughs> star with a tail, my nagi. That's all it is, is a star with a tail. But then what? Then what? The etymological dictionary of the great Russian language, Dahl, one of the most authoritative dictionaries of the 19th century, contains the generalized definitions of meteor as any atmospheric phenomenon Meteors can thus be aqueous, igneous, aerial, or luminous. Dragons can be water dragons, fire dragons, right straight up ether dragons, my nigga. Under igneous meteors, igneous like volcano, like volcano layers, man. Like dragon layers, man. Okay, fiery pillars and balls and stones. Aerial meteors may be winds and whirlwinds and the mist. The definition of a common doll's dictionary, listen up, is a heavenly body, which in comparison to others is of a huge mass, though sparse, nebulous, transparent. Sometimes it may be seen to have a nucleus while the surrounding area forms something like a, listen up, like a, listen up, forms something like a tail, beard, or tangled locks, managa body bag for the illusion of a space rock falling they say you know space rocks falling they're flying right if you look at meteor in a dictionary it's gonna say flying not falling flying my nigga. and those rocks don't have tangled dreadlocks <laughs> and those rocks don't have a beard do they so a star with a tail is only according to elizabeth warner a dragon The medias are the dragons. Yeah, man. Start with a tail. <sighs> Shooting star, right? Translated as shooting star. So this comet, this shooting star, this dragon. Remember, he's trying to form this alliance. They call it a pan-Native American alliance. This is the Israelite last stand coming together, our last hope to come together. Because after this, Monogamy, there was no other major attempt to come together. It was a free fall at this point, Monogamy. It, it was the remnant of the Chickamauga, other tribes trying to, you know, they're trying to keep it going. <clears throat> they're trying to keep it going to the best of their ability, but it wasn't no new super effort that, you know what I'm saying, really changed the hands of things. They were just taking L's at this point. They were just taking L's, taking L's, taking L's to finally say, all right, enough of this. Let's go to Mexico. Let's go to the Mexicans. <laughs> oh, okay, for this, let's go to the Philippines. All right, now we're in what? Vietnam. Now we're in what? The Cold War, Iraq, you know, Afghanistan, right? So, we ain't travel too far from this. And we damn straight travel too far from Chickamauga, Chickamauga, Chickamauga. So when Ma started popping off Chickamauga, brought us right back to the indigenous truth of the Kumsa. The Kumsa. What's this Treaty of Greenville, 1791? Kumse led a scouting party to help defeat the general Arthur St. Clair's army at the Battle of Wabash. He then fought the Battle of the Fallen Timbers in the Maumee River. 
General Andy Wayne is decisively defeated the Indians and both sides signed the Treaty of Greenfield. Oh, the Chickamauga was then signed the Treaty of Greenfield. <laughs> the other chair is right. That's why the Chickamauga was written which forced the Indians to forfeit their land in the first territory. The Coombs, they refused to sign the treaty. I'm like, no, you don't own it, Sally. We don't say that we truly own our land. You know, we, gotta, you know, we can't own mama. Can't own mama. You know what I'm saying? He believed the land was shared by all the Nagas and could not be negotiated away. Nonetheless, they made a treaty, right? All the white leaders did not. <clears throat> So the natives abided by the treaty, but the whites did not, right? You recon it, man. So you got Prophet's Town, you got the Kumsays, his brother, Lala Wethika, experienced alcohol induced vision and declared his intent to, his to reclaim their lands and cultures. So they want to throw this alcohol in here, right? You see how they do. We still they do man. he couldn't have a bit they weren't there these are false witnesses right they're like oh, alcohol induced come on man you weren't there man <laughs> he changed his name to ten skawatawa and became known as the prophet or just the alcoholic prophet they want us to think you see how they do us man after correctly predicting a solar eclipse in 1806 hordes of Indians from various tribes following the prophet 1808 the kum and the prophet so I sound like moses and aaron right <laughs> moved their going multi-tribal alliance Israelites to Prophet's Town near the Wabash and Tippecanoe River in present Then came the Battle of Tippecanoe, you know what I'm saying? Rally them, the only way that the only way to overcome the invaders was to unite and resist this hijack. Like, man. This is where they say, uh, his brother to come save the town and found both the village and the hard one Indian cold and destroyed. He rallied the to come say rallied the remaining followers during the war of eighteen twelve and joined British forces in Mexico, playing a key role in defeating American forces at the siege of Detroit. After Detroit's fall, the come say shot the tech in Detroit, man. Come on, man, I can't make this up. Showing British Major General Henry Crockett Harrison and his army after Harrison invaded Canada, the British were forced to flee. So which Brits were these? Which which Nagas was these British, man? Clearly they was on some other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Or else trust me, Tacumse, the Chickamauga wouldn't even be dealing with him, right? Tacumse and his men grudgingly followed the suit. Harrison pursued them in Thames River, where Tacumse was killed October 5th. 1813. This is real Naga history. You don't need no black history, man. This real Naga history. You can get this all throughout the year, man. You need no month for it. You can get it all throughout the year. His goal never lost sight of his goal to unite the tribe. But what was the problem, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's crazy that they they stopping this link right here, man. Cause this link got a lot of drop on it. Over on that play, play again. This page isn't working. I was literally just on this page hours ago. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just too much drop, man. They couldn't take it. They couldn't take it. But some of what was on this right here. We talk about this talk to Chickasaw, uh, Allen. Alliance with um, originally with Dragon Canoe, but it says here that the Chickasaw and Chickasaw allied with the so-called Americans, right? With the hijacks, with the treaties. Let's go. Pushma Taha was chief of the six towns, encompassing most of the Choctaw and Chickasaw living in the Lower Mississippi Valley. He fought with the Americans during the Revolution and championed cooperation with them afterward while Tecumseh called for the Pan-Indian Alliance 
can call for them to tribe up, Managi, all right, to resist further hijack expansion. Push Mataha strongly disagreed in 1811. He's saying they was under more pressure, but push Mataha and the Choctaw, they didn't feel that pressure like that. And they had made their deals already, you know what I'm saying? So they just weren't gonna, you know, risk anything at this point. So ultimately none of the Southern Indian nations joined the resistance for the tribes to tribe up. In fact, push Mataha fought under General Andrew Jackson against the Seminole, against the Seminole. This is why we drop, man. You want to claim your truck, man? Go ahead. Don't even, when you see Seminole, man, you know, you better hold some strong accountability because we know now that the Choctaw under this, you know, push Mataha was fighting against the Seminole and the Seminole was tribed up with the Creek and the Creek was tribed up with the Shawnee and Tecumseh and the uh, Chickamauga, Chickamauga, Chickamauga. This was the stronghold. It was against the stronghold. They were doing their best to get the dog tile with that, the lower Muskegee with that, and other tribes with that. But they were signing deals, man, where they couldn't go against the master at this point, right? But who's the master really? Who's the master really? Huh? Man, it's heartbreaking. Let's get this dismount, man. <laughs> Best dismount of all time, man. So Push Mataha and the Choctaw fought under Andrew Jackson against the Seminole during the Battle of Horseshoe Bend in 1814. Let's go to it. Oh, wow. We weren't far, were we? We weren't far, were we? Eighteen fourteen, Creek War. U.S. expands in its territory in Florida, Managa. All right, this is against the Choctaw. This is happening against the Choctaw, Managa. You know what I need right now, man? One of them sound baths, man. You know. Search for like a sound bath, man. I see a couple of little enjoys. Can I do that, man? <laughs> Can we get a four three two sound bath, though? That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Okay, okay. Feels like I'm going to down with one y'all what, man? One y'all what? Look this one, man. How's the energy? Huh? Does that? Oh, wow. Well, let's get a nice little sound back. Let's fall back. Let's get a nice Get cozy for the dismount, man. No rush, man. No rush. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I'm still in my car, man, making this happen for my noggins. <laughs> it's all happening, man. It's all good. Fall back, man. Fall back, my noggins. All right. So Managa the battle in 1814. The leader of the of the Choctaw that wouldn't 
make an alliance with Tecumse. After Tecumse was killed, immediately allied with General Andrew Jackson and fought against against the Seminole in 1814. 1814, they just call it the War of 1812 <laughs> because all of this is included with the War of 1812, which is Tecumseh's War. So after Tecumseh died here, here comes Push. He didn't have the gumption to do this before, right? To break Tecumseh's heart like this before. But right after he dies, he shows his true colors, allies with Andrew Jackson, fights against the Seminole, in this Creek War here, and helped the U.S. to expand its territory in Florida. Anti-piracy war. <laughs> Who's the pirates? <laughs> Managa, Second Barbary War, Hebrew word of the day, swan. Right, right, right. Let's go, let's go. This is what Push Mataha does. Now, this is, you know, Something else, hey, let us know. Other than that, be accountable and say, yeah, we helped. Our tribe helped the U.S. expand its territory into Florida. Our tribe helped Andrew Jackson. Killed their own brothers, broke the code, made treaties with the devil. This is why we're here today, Monaga. This is what got us to this position. Don't you get it? They couldn't do this without brother on brother. You're responsible for this. Don't ask nobody, oh, how come it's us? Oh, black people. Who's a black person? What are you talking about? What tribe are you from? Take accountability for yourselves. Wake up, man. Out that spell and break that Ruach Tardy Ma right now. And get down with the tribe, man. Tribing up. Because you didn't get down before when the Naga was tribing up. Letting you know not to make a deal with the devil. Now you over here squirming around like, what happened? What happened? You happened, man. We happened. We didn't tribe up, man. And honestly, by then, it was too damn late anyway. This dragon that we saw in 18... Uh, 11, this Tecumseh coming. They said, you know, eat us an old man, right? Just know that earthquakes came with this, man. Earthquakes were preceded by the appearance of this great comet. This, this wasn't symbolizing good for him. You know, at this point, it was the end. This particular dragon come around, you know, in very important times. <laughs> Ramses, right? Egypt, the Hebrews getting free. So this dragon was symbolizing freedom or symbolizing, man, it's a wrap, right? <laughs> hey, it was called the Kumsay's Comet or Napoleon's Comet because in Europe, Napoleon was getting ran out of Russia by this thing. <laughs> So it's the same dragon running Napoleon out of Russia and giving Tecumse a warning. Tecumse, whose name also means comet, right? Or dragon, just like dragon canoe, dragon. Shawnee Indian leader whose name meant shooting star, he who walks across the sky, you know what I'm saying? All that drop. So these earthquakes are popping off with the dragon. The volcanoes are popping off with the dragon. All this is happening. What's happening? Treaties are being signed. Peace of friendship. Brother on brother. People turning their backs. They're not tribing up. Maybe it was a warning, man. If y'all don't tribe up, it's a wrap. And we didn't do it. We didn't do it, my man. Are we gonna do it now? We're just gonna claim your tribe without stepping into reality. Because within us, even if we don't remember it, 
it's within us. All this is within us. This story is within us, man. This is the angel love song. Eighteen eleven, Takumse traveled south to meet with the Creek, Chickasaw, and the Choctaw. The Shawnee leader had promised a sign of power, a dragon, my not. And as he arrived in Alabama, a huge dragon appeared. They say comet. What did Elizabeth Warner say? Dragon is comet. Star with a tail. What else? Star with a tail. Bearded with tangled dreadlocks, my name. Yeah. Okay. So a comet, I mean, a star with a tail with a beard and tangled locks appeared, brightening the sky, fading after his departure. His departure? What comet is a his? Uh oh, got him. The shiny leader had promised a sign of his power. And as he arrived in Alabama, a huge comet appeared, brightening the skies and fading after his departure. All right, so maybe we're just talking about Tecumse bounce and the comet or the dragon bounce with him. Either way, we're talking about a star with a tail, bearded and tangled locks. Then shortly after he left for Prophet's Town, a series of violent earthquakes arched out of the epicenter. Sounds like the sinking of Atlantis, huh? <laughs> to Southern Missouri to destroy lives and property throughout the, it sounds like Atlantis, huh? How recent was this, huh? Tecumseh had made good on his promises. He journeyed to Canada in 1812 to forge an alliance with the British. So in Canada, there were some you know, Naga's over there that he was trying to connect with. It's a rich history. It's a rich alliance. It's the same tribe, my Naga. It's the same town, my Naga. They're going from town to town. Right? That's why you got the British flag with this thing, too. Follow the town. Alabama, follow the town. You'll follow the indigenous alliance of my Naga's that's rocking with wisdom. The knights, the swans, the barbers, con. Huh? Let's go. I said the knights, the swans, the barbers, huh? the swans. 775 AD, man. Start with a tail. Dragons are meteors, are comets. Dragon. <laughs> Meteor. Fiery luminous body, appearance of flying, right? <laughs> Not falling rock, flying or floating, my nut. Floating rocks? Flying rocks? I don't think so. Yeah. But now their meteor-like flame lawless through the sky. So now these dragons have no law to them, right? They're now savages, right? <laughs> nah, my nah. The dragon is the meteor. Is the star with a tail bearded with tangled locks. Is the fierce surviving person another thing, man? Yeah, man. Uh, do you think you can get into dragon form anytime soon, my night? Do you think you know you have the ability to take on whatever form as Hawa, you know, has made us one with the ether, my night? If you're in battle time, you want to be in this human form or dragon form? You know, I don't know. Is this crazy? This is this crazy? I don't know, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'm crazy, man. Maybe we're tripping. Push Mataha fought under Ab Jackson against the Sim of the Battle of Horseshoe Bend in 1814. Following the end of the war in 1815, the United States secured millions of acres 
millions of acres of land from the Great Lakes nations, despite the alliance with Pushmataha Push and the Choctaw, the United States proceeded to aggressively remove the Southern nations as well. Oh, they made a deal with the devil. And in the end of the day, it was all bad for everybody. I mean, we can all agree now, surely we can all agree, even you're, if even if you're in the elite, highest level of boule, highest level of secret society, highest level of, you know, organization, even you can agree that this shit is fucked up. We done fucked up at some point. You got to admit this. You got to take accountability, my nigga. To get back in code, we got to be accountable to get back in code. So even without their treaties of peace and friendship, even despite their alliance that, you know, push Mataha and the Choctaw had with these United States corporations, they still aggressively removed the Naga, man, culminating with the Naga Removal Act in 1831. Andrew Jackson's signature piece of legislation while president, the following account of the debate between the Kun San Posh Push Mu Mataha was recorded in 1880 based on Choctaw oral history. So this ain't coming from the Chickamauga oral history. This is based on the Choctaw themselves. Man. Get a piece of this for the dismount, man. Wow. So it starts off in view of questions of vast, of vast importance we have met together in solemn council tonight nor should we here debate whether we have been wronged and injured. So let's not bring up our injuries and our wrongness, all right? Let's not bring up the wing wham. Let's forget all that for a second. But by what measures we should avenge ourselves for our merciless oppressors have long since planned out their proceedings are not about to make, but have and are still making attacks upon those of our race. What race? The copper color race is found here. Who have as yet come to no resolution. Nor are we ignorant by what steps and by what gradual advances the whites break in upon our neighbors, imagining themselves to be still undiscovered. They show themselves the less audacious because you are insensible the whites are already nearly a match for us all united. <laughs> and too strong, he said nearly a match. So he still, to Tacoma say, they ain't got nothing on him, right? They ain't got nothing on the Chickamauga. He say, man, these whites are nearly getting to be a match for us, man, when we're all united. Letting you know that in unity, they would not have been able to conquer America and too strong for any one tribe alone to resist so that unless we support one another with our collective and united forces unless every tribe unanimously combines to give a check to the ambition and avarice of the whites so check they ask we got to give it a, a check move they will soon conquer us apart and disunited and we will be driven away from our native country and scattered, Deuteronomy 28, scattered as autumn, autumn leaves before the wind. Scattered. And after you're scattered, what's the goal? When the children of your people shall speak unto you, say, Will thou not tell us what you mean by this? Say unto them, Thus says the wild 
Behold, I'm going to take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will put them unto him together with one stick of Judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in my hand. After you were scattered. What Tukum says after, what Dragon Canoes after is what Hawa is after. Is thou the town? Why do you think it's the very last letter of the Aleph Bet? The cross sticks, the mark, the sign, the signal, the monument, the covenant. Because this is the end game. You coming together is game over for any hijack in any frequency. You coming together is Hawa. You coming together, us coming together is our only breath of security. When we support each other like this, man, we don't need nobody outside of us. That is a breath of security, huh? But have we not, not courage enough remaining to defend our country? No, nah, I just want to vote. I'll just vote and hope Biden takes the black people contract seriously. What would Takum say say? What would Dragon Canoe say? Have we not courage enough remaining to defend our country and maintain our ancient independence? Will we calmly suffer the white intruders and tyrants to enslave us all? Remember, you, you're suffering peacefully, right? Peaceful slavery or dangerous freedom? That's the question. Shall it be said of our race that we knew not to extricate ourselves from the three most to be dreaded calamities, folly, inactivity, and cowardness? Is that what you want them to say about us, man? That we couldn't separate ourselves from the three most dreaded calamities, folly, inactivity, you're suffering peacefully right now, my naga. You are inactive. Cowardness. You're scared of every damn thing, right? But what need is three to speak of the past? It speaks for itself and asks, where today is the Picor? Where is the Nar Naranjasets? Where's the Mohawks, the Pakanets, the Pakanakets, and many other powerful tribes of our race? They have vanished before the avarice and op oppression of the white men. Remember white also is W-I-G-H-T, has nothing to do with color. White means devil. White means devil, demon, W-I-G-H-T, Game of Thrones, the whites. It's not talking about color, nah, we're talking about whites. That's why they like to classify as white, because they know who they are, because they know what they've done. They've been adverse to the code. They've been adverse to the people of the code. They are whites. Yeah, they're whites. They classify as white because they're white. Straight up. Man, right? As snow before the summer sun. So we have vanished like snow before the sun. In the vain hope of alone defending their ancient possessions, they have fallen in the wars with these whites, devils, demons. Look abroad over their once beautiful country and what see you now? Nothing but ravages of the pale faced destroyers meet your eyes. <laughs> Remember black is pale. 
So it will be with you, Choctaws and Chickasaws. Why does the Kumsa have to come to y'all personally? Like, you know what I'm saying? What do you think he has to convince you about? It's obvious that you've been getting destroyed. What is the talk about? What's the debate about? <laughs> you know what it's about, man? about the treaties of peace and friendship man. made in 1786. Come on, man. What a man. So look, man, he's trying to warn the Choctaw, warn the chair, Ch Chickasaw. Soon your mighty forest trees under the shade of whose wide spreading branches you have played in infancy, sported in boyhood, and now rest your wearied limbs after the fatigue of the chase will be cut down to fence in the land which the whites <laughs> dare to call their own. Soon their broad roads will pass over the grave of their fathers and the place of their rest will be blotted out forever. The annihilation of our rest is at hand unless we unite in one common cause against the common foe. Think not, brave Choctaws and Chickasaws, that you can remain passive and indifferent to the common danger and thus escape the common fate. Your people too will soon be as falling leaves and scattering clouds before the blightening breath. You too will be driven away from your native land and, a, and ancient domains, right? Take their dominions, principalities, right? Papa Bull, as leaves are driven before the wintry storms. Sleep no longer, Choctaw. Sleep no longer, Chico. In false security and delusive hopes, our broad domains are fast escaping from our grasp. Every year, our whites become more greedy exacting, oppressive, and overbearing. Every year, contentions spring up between them and our people. And when blood is shed, we have to make atonement, whether right or wrong, at the cost of the lives of our greatest chiefs and the yielding up of large tracts of our land. Before the pale faces came among us, we enjoyed the happiness of unbounded freedom and were acquainted with neither riches, wants, no oppression. How is it now? Once an oppression or a lot? This is what we are? A homeborn slave? For are we not controlled in everything? And dare we move without asking by your leave, right? I need a passport. I need a driver's license, huh? And we not strip day by day of the little that remains of our ancient liberty. Stay at home order. Mask on, right? Do they not even know, do they not even now kick and strike us as they do their black faces? <laughs> so now, you know, you got to factor in, you know, those that they are bringing, you know what I'm saying, over to do what? To be in their wars too, from Africa, from everywhere else as well. How long, and, and these Nagas here saw how they was treating them. But at the same time, it's a Naga on Naga war. You know, so we take it all with the Dragonfly perspective and this translation ain't the exact translation. You know what I mean? So dies to hijack in the translation when they try to say this faces and that faces, we need to see the actual drop, you know, and translate it ourselves. Cause I guarantee you, we got something lost in translation here. How long will it be before they tie us to the post and whip us and make us work for them in their cornfields as they do them? Shall we wait for that moment or shall we die fighting before submitting to the ignominy? Anaga, you're not no homeborn slave. You've been fighting the whole damn time. You weren't just some good slave and field, Anaga. <laughs> When did that happen? Tell me when you had time to be that shit when you were doing it. You were too busy fighting, 
you know, for everything, putting it all in line, all this time. When were you slaying? When? You've been fighting the whole time, man. You still fighting today. They didn't. They couldn't make no good slave out of these knockers. They were fighting for hundreds, for hundreds of years. Where did it start? Check them up. And you get this drop, man. You know what I'm saying? You get this drop. Choctaw Chicken Saw. You were among the few of our race who sit idly or indolently at ease. You have indeed enjoyed the reputation of being brave, but will you be indebted for it more from report than fact? Will you let these whites encroach upon your domains, even to your very door, before you will assert your rights in resistance? Let no one in this council imagine that I speak more from malice against the pale-faced Americans than just grounds of complaint. Complaint is just towards friends who have failed in their duty. Accusation is against enemies guilty of injustice, and surely, if any people ever had, we have good and just reasons to believe we have ample grounds to to put their schemes into effectual execution, no matter how great the wrong and injury to us, while we are content to preserve what we already have, their design is to enlarge their possession by taking yours in turn. And will you, can you daily, long daily, Choctaw and Chickasaw, do you imagine that that will not continue longest in the enjoyment of peace who timely prepare to vindicate themselves and manifest a determined resolution to do themselves right whenever they are wrong far otherwise than haste to the relief of our common cause by con sang joint con sang joint unity <laughs> of blood you are bound let not let the be not far distance when you will be left single-handed and alone to the cruel mercy of our most interveterate foe. And that's a translation of what the Kumste was dropping down. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a piece of the response from Push Matahawa of the Choctaw, it was not by my design in coming here to enter into a disputation with anyone but i appear before you my warriors and my people not to throw into my plea against the accusation of the I have myself learned by experience, and I also see many of you, old Choctaw and Chickasaw, who have experience of years that I have, the injustice, in just injudicious steps of engaging in an enterprise be because it is new. <laughs> oh, your new ally stuff sounds good, but you don't just jump into stuff, right? You don't just jump into new things, nor do I stand up before you tonight to contradict the many facts alleged against the American people or to raise my voice. So he doesn't want to take any side, right? Or to raise my voice against them in useless accusations. So he doesn't even want to raise his voice against the whites because he thinks that's just useless to have a complaint about them stealing your land and murdering your people is useless. The question before us now is not what wrongs they have inflicted upon our race, but what measures are best for us to adopt in regard to them. Let's adapt, man. <laughs> let's adopt their, their stuff. Let's, let's take it all in. 
And though our race may have been unjustly treated and shamefully wronged by them, yet I shall not for that reason alone advise you to destroy them. Keep them alive. Preserve the enemy. Because we have treaties. We have promises. Unless it was just needed for you to do so. So to do, nor would I advise you to forgive them, though worthy of your commercialization, unless I believe it would be to the interest of our common good, we should consult more in regard to our future wealth. safety that's what they would tell us today he's giving us the wing wham that the black leaders would tell us today oh man don't don't be unpeaceful have a peaceful protest march peacefully don't endanger your future safety with violence malcolm x says by any means necessary right <laughs> you see what we're talking about it's the same effect man same dichotomy right but ain't nobody focused on the X marking the spot. Ain't nobody focus on the two cross sticks joining one, the unity. The real unity means that you get these hijacks up off you, right? That's really unified. Fake unity is, oh, let's adapt and let's be a part of the system, right? Because <laughs> that's peaceful slavery. You're suffering peacefully, right? Now, you know, this uh, jabroni's talking about reflect ere it be too late on the great uncertainty of war with the American people, with the hijacks. You know, that's uncertain. He's trying to put the fear spell on them and consider well, ere you engage in it, what the consequences will be if you should be disappointed in your calculations and expectations. Be not deceived with elusive hopes. Hear me or my countrymen, if you begin this war, it will end in calamities. He's putting a curse on these noggins before they start. And he's not going to help them. He's just going to curse them. And as soon as the Kumse dies, he rolls out to war with Andrew Jackson against the Seminole. If you begin this war, it's going to end in calamities. You helped the calamities. You were there fighting with Andrew Jackson. But it might not have been such if you were fighting with the Kumse. You could fight with Andrew Jackson, but not with the Kumse. Come on, Choctaw. You got to, we got to have straight up accountability when it comes, you know what I'm saying, to our ancestors, man. From which we are now free. Who's free and at a distance? How would you feel you're free unless you signed a treaty of pieces and friendship? And you believe in it so much, right? You trust in it so much at a distance, right? And upon whom of us they will fall will only be determined by the uncertain and hazardous event. So, you know, he comes with the fear spell, this uh, push ha ha ta ha, and opposes to comb. Eight and eleven, right? To come forward. This was the takedown from the inside out because we were not unified, and we had a a sign, right? A, a great comet in the sky. They said was visible for two hundred and sixty days. Shalawan to my real ones, man. We just popping off in real time, man. So what was 1811 about? Why was there a great dragon? Why did the Coombe say his name mean shooting star or star with a tail or dragon? Why are they following the head man of Dragon Canoe? 
making no peace with the hijack. Why are they rocking with this dragon? Name Andrew. <laughs> and what does the Andrews have to do with? So we got, you know, a piece of a translation of this council, you know, with the Kumse and you know, the uh, Shawnee, you know, or excuse me, yeah, the, the Choctaw. The Shawnee leader had promised a sign of power as he arrived in Alabama, a huge comet appeared right bright in the skies. With tensions of the U.S. and Great Britain exploding into what Kunta he saw. So he saw an opportunity, he said, man, we need enforcements, reinforcements, you know what I'm saying? What are these? you know, Nagas over here talking about, right, in Britain. <clears throat> he journeyed to Canada. You know, this was his final opportunity, like we're saying. It's the last, the last stand, my Naga. We're talking about the Hebrew last stand, the Tao, right? The Tao, the Ta, the Takum, Tukumsa. The sacrificed lamb, man, who became a martyr. <laughs> Like Dragon Canoe, man, became a martyr named Andrew. Is this where they're connecting the St. Andrew situation? So General Isaac Brock placed the Kumsang man of all Native American forces. So this is when they had that one last fight with, with the British against all of the you know, uh, United States jabronis, right? So should the British and Indians be victorious, the old Northwest would comprise an independent Indian nation with service protection. Now, of course, that could have ended up being all bad too, but they didn't make no treaties with none of these jabronis taking land over here. I don't know. Lesser of two evils or, you know, interests that, you know, aren't uh, contrasting, you know what I'm saying? Can we put this together to form an independent Indian nation? Or are we just talking about a nation of Israel under the same, you know, same flow as our family in Scotland, right? Ireland or Britain. How far is Britain from Scotland? Scotland. <laughs> How far is Britain from Scotland, my man? Some of these crests got dogs on them, man. <laughs> man. Yeah, man. Scotland, how far is Scotland from Britain, man? Who's fighting against King James and them, huh? Who's fighting against the Romans over there, man? Who Who's taking up the fight over there, man? Managa, it's you. Managa, it's you. Managa, it's you. And we're getting that pig series and really you know, dig on them pick wars over there, man. The picks, my naga, the roost is in there. So by the time they talk about Britons, just know that it's right next to Scotland. So they got allies on that side. I think most likely that's what Tacombe say was rocking with to try to form an independent Naga nation, man. All right. Despite a number of victories, this partnership turned fatal on October 5th, 1813 at the Battle of Thames. Outnumbered three to one by General William Henry Harrison's army. The Indians and British 
or wealth without fortifications and ultimately doom. They didn't have the tribe with them, man. They they didn't get the tribe up, you know. They didn't get the tribe up with the Chickasaw and Choctaw. Tecumseh's vision of the unified American Indian homeland was never fully realized within 35 years of Tecumseh's death at Moro Vinian Town. Many native nations east of the Mississippi River were forcibly relocated, but today the great Tecumseh is still revered for his intelligence, leadership, military, and he is honored throughout North America. Or shall we just call it, you know, the uh, American Empire of Kalelu? Why are they finding Hebrew artifacts with Hebrew writing on them in Arizona, my God? Stores and everything. Stores. <laughs> Who's carrying the swords, man? The knights? Yeah. We are talking the lost tribes of Israel, right? We're talking the Tao. Ezekiel 7. Take one stick for Judah. Take another stick right for At the conclusion of the journey, where X marks the spot, the mark, the sign, the signal, in your picto paleo, which goes back to the language of creation itself. That's how far back this symbol is. So, Managa, before you see it in any type of way, I hope this gives you a little more reference. Point. Love to my family that needed a little more clarity, you know, and we all need clarity. This gave me a lot more clarity, my life. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. You know, and that's what it's all about. Seeing clearly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please tell me about the outro, my Nagi, man. Just know it's all Ahab. We talking the towel. We talking the symbol, not the flag. And what's on the flag, Chickamauga. Now we have a reference point of who is the Chickamauga. And they come to the Chickamauga doors at first to get anywhere, my And it lasted for a long time. It lasted for a very long time, even after Death Home Say, even after, you know, the Choctaw Chiefs marched up against the Seminole, my Naga, against the creek against the Seminole, my Nagi. Now you warred against your brothers, right? The same ones that <clears throat> the Kumsay is meeting with and having a tribe of conversation with is now fighting against the Confederacy of the tribe, not their Confederacy, the Confederacy that Dragon Canoe put together. And it's still going on and it's still going on. So when did it stop? I mean, when did the Choctaw, you know, get back in line or, or did it never stop? You know what I'm saying? When did the Chickasaw get back in line or did it never stop? On and on we go. We still going against the Seminole, huh? California is, huh? All the Naga Southwest and the Nagas of Tall Texas. And that's why it's Cal Street, Tall Texas Harp, man. The Wada for giving the harp on in Tall Texas. The water for surfing this wave, Managa, reaching our mark, our towel, our towel by definition. In Gematria, the towel represents the number 400, the largest single number that can be represented using the sophit or final forms. 400 years sounds like an exodus to me. <laughs> it sounds like you hit the mark. You back in cold, you keeping it cold. In Judaism, Tav is the last letter of the 
Ent, which means truth. Oh, so the Tao is the truth. Tau is the 22nd letter and final letter of the Hebrew alphabet for honey. It means truth, sign, life, or death. Oh, man. So either you're going to, man, by the time you get there, by the time you get there, either you're going to have life or death, man. What's, what signal is this going to be for you? Because this ain't all right, right? It's a sign, all right. What's up? Mark of what? Are you in the covenant or out the covenant? That's what the Tao is to you. The Tao is the truth. And you're rocking with the truth or you're not. You're rocking with the wave, with the water, you ain't. But it's going to be a sign of your life or your death. Just like that comment is a sign of your life or your death, man. Right? Just like that dragon is a sign of life or death, right? I said that drag is alive for death, this fierce of violent person, male or female, man or woman, is a dragon, is the truth, my nagi, because you see clearly. And we're just surfing away <laughs> to that drive of music, man. Hey, man, look here, man. Been enjoying a nice sound bath for the dismount, but. It's really warm with spark of fire, man, with that music. And that's why we do it, man. For the bro Tecum Say, man. For the brother Dragon Canoe, man. That's why we call Five I Ma. Take it away, man. Yeah. Hey, we did it again, man. Shout out to Wam to the Jew. Shabbat Cool, cool. Oh. Uh. 